How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Daddy Dave, and this is the post episode 13, the number six live stream post episode 13. Holy smokes, we have been smoking on live streams here lately, and I am totally on board for it. How is everybody doing out there tonight? I hope you're having a fantastic day so far, because I tell you what, I am absolutely on cloud 9,000 right now i am having a really really good night i will elaborate on that a bit more here shortly but like i said i hope everybody out there is having a fantastic one because oh oh boy good stuff going on around here now i'm just checking a few things out we'll get going here in a few minutes just see who else joins us if you're out there in the crowd go ahead and let your presence be known Say a hi, say something out there so I know that you're there because unfortunately YouTube does not give me any sort of uh, roll call or anything like that. So I have no idea you're out there unless you say something. Let's see. So the stream health is looking good and we are all in the green. So perfect. Eli, how's it going? Hope you're having a good night so far. Let's see. Ch -ch 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 we've got oh we got one more minute in game before all the wood that goes from this little production point here into the various bits around the uh, map here including the carpentry here and the pelletizer here and i'm gonna show exactly where those are here shortly with the volumes yes you are awesome glad to hear it glad to hear you having a good night Let's see, do, 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 we are, we are, we are, yep, we're looking good, looking good, got everything all set up, okay, like I said, we're going to wait about one or two more minutes, see who else joins us, and then we're going to get rocking and rolling. Let's see, yeah, yes, 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 perfect. Oh, that tree line, it's getting further and further away. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, good stuff. Good, good stuff. Like I said, it's been a good, good night. I'm really pumped up right now, and I plan on bringing a lot of energy tonight because holy smokes, I'm just, I'm sitting here just buzzing in my chair. I'm just vibrating. I'm so, so pumped right now. All right. Like I said, if you're out there in the chat, go ahead and give yourself a shout out. Let me know that you're out there because uh, I don't know that you're out there unless you say something. So right now, as far as I'm aware, Eli is the only person out there. Uh, here soon, I'm going to be doing a logging business on YouTube too. Ooh, nice, Eli. That sounds cool. I'll have to uh, I'll have to check out your channel and see what you got there. Let's see. All right, it is 9.33. We are going to go ahead and get rocking and rolling. So first, we are going to go through kind of the overall on everything. You can see there was 157,000 liters of wood in the production point. This little to-go case for wood it is now distributed out. Looks like 639,000 liters of wood is in the carpentry right now. 686,000 liters of wood pellets. We've got 30,000 liters of pellets that are just stored in the carpentry and 34,000 liters of furniture. So that is just producing like mad. Plus, we've got 4,000 liters that are in the production zone and about 5,000 liters just kind of kicked off to the side there, all of furniture. So we've got quite a bit of money just in furniture alone and pretty decent amount in pellets. But this is where the magic happens. So you can see 9,000 liters of wood that's chugging along, 13,000 liters of wood chips. Uh, not that impressive. I mean, it's not a lot that gets stored here, but it goes from a one to two ratio, so not too bad. 176, but right here, 120,000 liters. 120,000 liters of pellets and pellets are so so good for pricing I'm going to show this one more time because I showed this earlier and I want to make sure that I show it again because it is one of my favorites to make 
Let's see. Pellets, pellets everywhere, but not a drop to drink. There it is. $2,420. Right now, right here. Love it. Look at this. $2,900 is the peak. $2,300. You're talking a $500 swing. Yo, know, up to up and down. I mean, you can't beat that. Two and a half thousand dollars per thousand liters. We've got 120,000 liters. You're talking almost 320 odd thousand dollars right there. Just boom, just sitting right there in front of me. And it's only going up. It's only getting higher. And again, that doesn't include the 30,000 that's over there. I mean, hot diggity dog. Hot diggity dog. We are doing fantastic. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Let's get to work. We need to take this over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to top off the wood at the pellet production so that way it will continue to chug along and get us the product that we need. Um, oh man, but yeah, today was an absolute great day. Vortex, hey, how's it going bud? Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Oh man, I know I am. I am really having a good night. Um, going to lab, wow, wow, wee, wee, wow. What's happening? Why? When? How? Stop it. There we go. So, you know what? Boop. We'll just eat that one right up. Uh, anywho, what was I going to say? What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Fantastic day so far. Uh, turned into a really awesome evening. Why? There it is. There it is. Let's go ahead and grab these two large trees right here. Let's see. Eli says, right now I'm trying to find the best mods I can use. Um, and uh, it's just me now. Okay, uh, that's fine. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Start out slow, but we'll pick it up as time goes on. But, uh, so some really good mods. Like I said, I if you're doing forestry work, um, like you said, you're doing a logging business. My, my highest recommendation are those two production points right there. The ones I showed, they're called the uh, pellet pr uh, production pellets, this one here, and then the carpentry, and the carpentry is specifically from a pack. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, under production, scrolling to the right. I think I've shown you this a couple of times, but I will show it one more time because make sure I do my due diligence. Right here. It is from the packing facilities mod. Um, and packing facilities... Uh, is a whole pack of different production points. So you've got the sugar mill, you got the grain mill, all these different factories and stuff that you can do. And you got the packing facility uh, that's a part of this as well. And what it does is you take all the various base game products plus a couple of extra ones that this pack produces, like the pellets, like the, I think that's, uh, that's not honey, that's like syrup, I think. Um, let's see. Ketchup and salads are also a part of this. And you got, I believe that's homogenized milk. Um, and you gather all the products, every single one from base and the couple that you get in extras, and you make them into those colored boxes. You got the blue, the red, and the gold. Those ones are like food uh, packaging. You've got object packaging, and you got one more. I can't remember. And then you got the black bow at the end there. That is reputation, and the prices on those. It's like $60,000 per thousand liters of the box color. The Each colored box is like 60000 per thousand liters. That re black bow, if you can get one of those, 1,000 liters is like $600,000 if you can get them. But it's a lot of inputs. It's a lot to go into. So it's, uh, yeah, a lot, lot, lot. Uh, Eli says, I don't know what you're talking about because I just started to... Oh, just, okay, well then, hey going into detail here uh are you talking about the cost if you are i can't use that um so no it's uh sorry so let me kind of back up here so i i presume that you're familiar with the production points the the places where you can put in an input of some sort of product and you get some kind of product coming out um those various production sites are found around most maps you can just kind of uh, either buy them or install them. The one production points I can recommend to you if you're doing a logging map or some kind of logging company like you said on your channel, um, then I would recommend those two that I just pointed out earlier. Those two 
um, produce a lot to do with wood and wood products. Uh, let's see. Vortex. What is the tiny box you carry around? Oh, the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Love that box. That box is right over here. This thing... If I look at the productions, and I scroll over to the right, doo -doo -doo -doo, oh, I just passed it, is right here. This is the Mobile Wood Warehouse. And what this is, is the forestry cheat code. What do I mean by that? If I come over here, I cut down a tree, any tree. Doesn't matter, big tree, small tree, in between trees, right? I take this little box. You see how it says in the top left-hand corner? It says sell wood. Boom. Drop it down. Tree disappeared, right? Cut it down. It's all great. It's now in that production point right here. It's storing all my wood in that little box. It's basically the container wood containers that Giants gave us from the Platinum Edition DLC. But this was the rendition before we got those containers, right? And you can set this to distribute, and it pretty much distributes about 99% of all product that's in that uh, production into other facilities that take wood as an input. So it is just mwah, chef's kiss. I absolutely love it. If you're not huge on doing forester work, this is the thing to do. Uh, Eli says, the one that costs money. Um, so... All these should be mods that you should that you'd be able to download from the mod hub themselves. They shouldn't actually cost anything. Um, like if you're doing something like the Platinum Edition DLC and stuff like that, those cost money. But the ones I pointed out to you up until this point shouldn't be it shouldn't cost you a dime. It should just be available for downloading on the mod hub. Let's see. Oh oh oh! I am. I am way off, way off kilter here. Let's try that again. Now we're talking. Let's see. Jody, how's it going, bud? Uh, where's my buddy? I found that mod. There you go. Nice. Yeah, that mod, I tell you what, it is fantastic. Eli says, okay. Vortex says, that's like an inventory box from an anime. Yes. Yes. I tell you what, uh, Vortex, I've actually, uh, now that you mentioned, I've been watching a fair bit of anime here lately. Uh, been getting into um, Jujutsu Kaisen. Been actually just watched a couple episodes of that tonight. That was That's loads of fun. I love that one. Um, ooh, how is that looking up here? I might be able to get one or two more trees in there. Let's see. Um, let's see, Jujutsu Kaisen I've been watching, I've been watching, um, what's the other one I've been watching? Uh, My Hero Academia, that's a great one. Attack on Titan, that's a great one. Uh, actually been turning my wife on to some of them, and she really loved Attack on Titan, and then we watched My Hero Academia, and she just absolutely lost it over that one. She really enjoyed that, and she's not a huge anime fan whatsoever. Let's see, let's drop this tree here. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Jody says, how's everybody doing tonight? Jody, I am doing fantastic. Eli says good, and Jody says it's been a real good. Awesome, glad to hear that, bud. I tell you what, so I started talking about how I am literally on cloud nine right now. So. After the stream, you know, the, the, I took off from the uh, stream earlier today because my daughter woke up. You might have heard her in the background kind of, you know, chatting and cooing and, and fussing just a little bit. Well, afterwards, my wife and I decided that we were going to go out and about and we were going to take her up to a park and we were just going to let her run around and play and all that stuff. And then it dawned on us, no, we can't because it's getting ready to rain. Um, so we decided, okay, well, we'll just go up to the store and we'll take her out to get some of our favorite ice cream. Um, there's a little ice cream shop just a few towns over from us, um, and they kind of specialize in this kind of quote-unquote nice cream, um, where it's 
basically per serving, it's about 100 calories per serving. Um, so it works out really well if you want some, like a sweet treat, but don't want to, you know, like ruin a diet or something. It's a place called Delights, and it's actually really good. Um, really good for what it is. There we go. Okay, so now let's get this back over and we'll chug through. So after all that, we ended up going, uh, going, went to the grocery store, picked up a few things, and we decided along the way that, hey, we're going to make something for dinner that we don't often make. So we decided to make an eggplant parmesan. Um, and I typically do the cooking when it comes to deal, uh, dinner time. So... I'm like, well, why don't we make it kind of like a hybrid? Why don't we do like an eggplant chicken parmesan? So it's not just a, you know, bare bones basic, you know, plant and uh, sauce kind of recipe. And my was like, okay, yeah, yeah, well, we can do something like that. So I end up whipping up this uh, eggplant chicken parmesan, and it turned out so good. The eggplant, I, I could have left it in the oven for a little bit longer, kind of toast it up, because uh, I didn't let the water leach out as long as I could have or should have, maybe. Um, it was just still a little bit too soggy in the center, but that's okay. I mean, it still tasted delicious. We were both really happy about it. Um, we, got our, we got our ice cream. Uh, our daughter, she absolutely loves it, and she started, uh, she started saying ice cream, and so it's this little high-pitched... Ice cream, ice cream, it's just so absolutely cute. But uh, so afterwards, we we came home and, or I'm sorry, after uh, dinner, we, we sent her off to to get her baths, and I'm sitting there cleaning up my mess from dinner time and all that stuff. And then we sit down, we watch uh, TV. Like I said, we were watching the Jujutsu Kaisen. And afterwards, you know, about nine o'clock rolls around, and we tell. Uh, my daughter realizes that it's getting ready for bedtime because I get up and I start to feed the dogs. And after I do that, I will go out and I will start stomping around kind of heavy footed, whatnot, and just making a lot of obnoxious noise. Because then what she does, she goes running for my wife. And as she goes running for the wife, she'll like hide her head into her and she'll just like hide, 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 hide. Daddy's coming, daddy's coming. Well, tonight as we're getting ready to put her down for bed, um, we, I, I started to uh, talk to her and, and normally I'll start to sing to her and I'll sing things like Old MacDonald and whatnot and get her to repeat the, the animal noises you know what the sounds a sheep make and she'll say bah and it, just things like that well tonight I decided to skip the songs and went for uh, I love you and so I'm like alright say can you say I love you and she's just kind of staring at me with a big smile and she's got her passy in her mouth and I finally I take the passy from her mouth and I'm like can you say I love you and then just it, three little words come out of her mouth just kind of whispering the I love you and just oh it just melted my absolute soul I heard that come out of her and I, I just I literally screamed I'm like babe get in here and she comes darting in like something's wrong, right? She thinks that, oh my God, like I dropped her or, you know, something along those lines or that she got hurt. And it's like, what, what, what's going on? What's going on? And I'm like, your daughter just said, I love you. And she loses. She's like, what? What? Are you kidding me? I missed the first I love you. I'm like, you sure did. So we sat there for every bit of like 20 minutes trying to get her to say it again. And then finally, finally, she uh, she said it again in front of my wife so she could hear it. And uh, it was just absolute magical. Just, it just completely made my night, made my absolute year. Uh, just so cool. It was the first and second time she said I love you. It was her first three-word three, uh, three word sentence. It was just a whole bunch of firsts tonight. So I was really, really thrilled about that. Let's see. Let me catch up with what the chat is saying. Uh, let's see. Vortex. Uh, gotta love AOT. AOT. Sorry, bud. I'm not uh, not sure what AOT is. Can you elaborate? Uh, also, all good Jody. Jody says uh, you cleared out a lot more trees. Oh, yes, we did. We cleared out a ton of trees. Uh, Eli said... 
Did you know that me and you could be Xbox friends? I did not, uh, Eli. Uh, go ahead and send me a friend request. I can, uh, I can accept that at some point. Uh, Vortex says that's amazing to hear. Yeah, I mean, it was just, like I said, I'm just sitting here just buzzing in my chair uh, with, with my daughter. Just, like I said, the first I love you, the second I love you, um, the first three-word sentence, like, ugh, is just... It is absolutely heart melting. Uh, oh, like I said, I, I, I'm just, I'm pumped. I'm absolutely pumped. One, oh, oh, uh, Attack on Titan, duh. Gotta love Attack on Titan. Yes, 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 yes. Attack on Titan is such a good series. I am desperately waiting for the last episode to get dubbed into English because it is absolutely driving me nuts. It's one of those. I can't watch subtitles personally because then I'm sitting there reading it more than I'm trying to pay attention to what's going on and then I get lost you know it's one of those I can't can't do both I either have and you can see how I'm doing it here like when I when I'm sitting here reading the chat I'm looking over at the chat and completely stop what I'm doing here in order to read and catch up with what everybody's saying and doing so it's just one of those uh, oh, there it goes so it's one of those, like, subtitles and me are not friends. At all. But yeah, I've been watching uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. That's a really good one. I highly recommend that one. Uh, it's only got, like, two seasons out right now. But the, uh... The, uh, the, uh, the, uh... The, the storyline so far is really good. So if you're, if you're not familiar with it, Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen is all about, um... Like, demons. They walk the earth, and they're pretty much responsible for all of human disappearances and human, like, uh, not tragedies, but just if a human goes missing or something, it can very readily be explained by demons. And there's these, uh, these good guys called Jujutsu Sorcerers, and they go around trying to exercise the demons before they hurt people. Well, the... Jujutsu sorcerers use uh, various talismans and whatnot all around the world, basically, to protect certain areas where a lot of negative emotions can be had, such as schools, such as hospitals, things like that. Um, and it follows this main character called Itadori, and Itadori is for some reason i haven't gotten to this point in the story but for some reason he's like a cut above the rest he's stronger faster you know the whole nine yards and everybody around him in his high school um it, he's just like i said a cut above the rest well he ends up joining an occult club at his school he becomes a third member in this club and what ends up happening is he ends up finding this little talisman uh, that's supposed to be protecting the school, but at the same time, one of the jujitsu jiu sorcerers comes to try and collect it to recharge it, because after so long of it remaining uncharged, the spell that binds it gets weaker and weaker. Well, it's so weak by this point that the kids are able to undo the binding on it, and all of a sudden, once it's free, all the cursed spirits and demons uh, basically come out and try to find it they're attracted to its energy because if they eat it they absorb its power kind of thing so they they're trying to hunt it down so all the kids that were in the occult club that opened this thing are now in danger um but itadori wasn't there he just gave it to the occult club and he just couldn't uh, be around when they were getting ready to open it and do stuff with it so he realizes oh crap something's wrong after he runs into this jujitsu sorcerer and they get to the school to find that demons or, or the, these cursed spirits are attacking his friends and he's trying to fight them off um and the jujitsu sorcerer is just amazed that he can even see him because most humans can't even see the spirits let alone you know interact with them and he's sitting there doing his best well all of a sudden he realizes that he's got the 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 cursed object and he ends up swallowing the object to gain its power because he remembered that the person, uh, the jiu-jitsu sorcerer said, well, if you, uh, these demons are trying to eat it to gain its power. So he's like, well, why can't I do it? Kind of thing. Well, all of a sudden he becomes a vessel 
uh, to this really powerful cursed spirit. It's like the most powerful one in the world ever has ever existed. And he uh, is somehow able to ward off this uh, spirit, this, this cursed spirit, from being able to take over his body. He's able, he's able to ward it off and become like a suitable vessel. And the long story short is he's given a choice. He can either be killed right there on the spot by the Jiu-Jitsu warriors because they need to excise the finger or, or the, the talisman, or they need to gather up all the rest of the talismans for this one demon. There's like 20 in total and he needs to eat them and then, then he dies kind of thing. So it's one of those, like, he, he's like, okay, well, I'm darned if I do, darned if I don't. And finally, he's like, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and just get them because I want to be able to help people. And if I can help people along the way, it's kind of a win-win. A so really good show. Really, uh, go, Joe, go hard. Yes. So see, you, you know what I'm talking about. Isn't the item a finger? Yes, it is, Eli. Yes, it is. It's a, the finger from the cursed spirit. Uh, Sukuna. So yeah, it's a. It sounds like a lot of people here know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a good, a really good show. Um, but yeah, uh, My Hero Academia. My wife and I absolutely love that one as well. We liked the. Uh, uh, what else? I, I mean, I'm a huge Dragon Ball fan from way back when. Uh, I grew up cutting my teeth on anime with with Dragon Ball. Uh, made it all the way up to Dragon Ball Super. Loved the new series. Um, it was certainly a breath of, breath of fresh air that that series kind of overwrote the GT series, in my opinion. Um, although I wasn't as you know hating on the GT series as a lot of other people were. I don't think it was like anywhere near Dragon Ball Z levels, but it was still good and I enjoyed it. Uh, let's see. Jody says, how's your wife doing tonight with her pregnancy? She is doing fantastic. Um, she, she's just, like I said, she, she's on cloud nine, just like I am with, uh, with our daughter saying the, I love yous. So just, yeah, one, one of those that it, it was such a, a cool experience to, to be a part of that I could probably be knocked over with a feather at this point it's just i'm so buzzing i'm so amped up i'm so hyped that uh yeah it is just a uh, good 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 day and i tell you what uh jody you'll get there too one day bud you're, you're gonna get there one day and you're gonna you're gonna know exactly what i'm talking about you get that first i love you and oh it just Everything up at that point just makes it worth it. Makes it so worth it. So yeah, just oh, such a good, such a good day. Uh, let's see, we have got Vortex. Uh, I like GT, but I get so uh, I get so much hate for it. You know what? Like I said, it's one of those I liked it too. It was it wasn't great. It wasn't like it wasn't G, uh, uh, Dragon Ball Z levels. Uh, and I'm glad that Super replaced. Uh, or kind of superseded, um, oh. it, it like superseded the GT and basically made that GT didn't exist kind of thing. But it's, it, I don't think it was terrible. I just think it was just something that they threw together almost. Like it would have been better if, uh, like Atakio Toriyama was like more involved or was involved with it, period. I think it would have been much better. But some of the villains were, were not that bad. You know, the, the Black Star Dragon I thought was pretty good. Um, you had the, uh, 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 not the Gremlins, what, what were they called? The, oh goodness, I can't remember. Anyways, uh, they ended up taking up Vegeta's body. They took over Vegeta's body and, and used him as a vessel to basically, uh, you know, wreak havoc on uh, the Saiyans kind of thing. Um, and eventually tried to destroy Earth. Uh, why can't I remember that? KJ Wiggums, hello, how's it going? Hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, KJ also says, 
can't stay tonight but need to come drop a like and say hello well hey bud i greatly appreciate it sorry to hear that you can't stay but i appreciate you dropping the like and stopping by and saying hi hope you have a fantastic night and take care but yeah no one of those uh Like I said, I've only recently just started really kind of getting into um, anime, and I think the reason for that is, is that it, it does a it has a whole different cultural mindset than, say, like American cartoons. Um, to where a lot of American cartoons, a lot of American entertainment, full sentence stop, is very much influenced by politics right now. So you'll see a lot of like kitschy little subjects being thrown in there. Uh, like the flavor of the day kind of thing, but you don't get that in Japanese cartoons or in just quote-unquote foreign uh, entertainment, full sentence stop. You know, you, you get more of a kind of traditional kind of, uh, you know, entertainment structure that uh, that I really like and really appreciate. Um, so yeah, it's, it's one of those that that's, I've just been really kind of starting to branch out and, and try and find more and more stuff. There's one uh, I found here recently. It's, it was recommended by some website that I just happened to come across uh, looking for like similar animes to My Hero Academia. Uh, it was called Black... Uh, Black something. Not Black Mirror. Hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll find it here in a minute. But... Uh, I'm probably going to start watching that. There's another one I was going to check out here before too much longer. Um, but like I said, my wife and I were just trying to get through the the first set of uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, and we're waiting for Attack on Titan, that final episode, to get dubbed. Um, we're hoping, based on what I'm reading, people are kind of thinking that it's going to be around... Uh... Yikes. They're kind of thinking between uh, April and May is what uh, I've been kind of seeing in the grapevine. Um, I'm kind of hoping that's the kind of time frame. But we'll see. Uh, Black Butler. No, that doesn't sound right. Um, it's on Crunchyroll. I'm trying to remember. Black... Hold on, I'm looking it up. Black Clover. Black Clover is uh, is the one that uh, was recommended by the website and said it was very similar to a, a My Hero Academia. Um, so that one I was going to check out. Um, there was another one that a friend of mine recommended called Code Geass. I, I've never heard of that one before, but she highly recommended that one. Um, so likely going to give that one a look-see. Um, yeah, I got, uh, got two or three, like I said, like just kind of on the back burner. You know, we'll see how it all kind of works out and whatnot. Ooh, we are starting to get on the, on the part of the field here where it's starting to collapse down and get to uh, a more narrow... Uh, more narrow area. It's it's oh man, like I said, y'all. I'm I'm really pumped. I'm we're making so much progress on this uh, forestry area. Let's see, Saskatchewan playing uh, Battlefield Five on my PS5 with some friends. Hey, that's awesome, bud. Hope it's going good for you so far. Let's see. We got Jody says. Cutting a lot of trees down on Rainy Woods map. Well, you know what, bud? <laughs> I'm right here with you. Right here with you. We're rocking and rolling, cutting all these trees down. So we are uh, we are on the same page with you. Uh, Vortex is darker than black. Uh, nope. Uh, black Clover. Yep, there we go. Uh, Eli says, I've seen that. Uh, Eli, do you recommend that one? Do you think Black Clover was uh, pretty good or... Like I say, it sounded very similar to My Hero Academia in the sense of, uh, you know, it's about this kid who wasn't born with, uh, 
but wasn't born with powers, but then kind of comes across them in some other means. So for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, My Hero Academia, um, My Hero Academia is about a boy, uh, probably early teens, who is living on Earth where basically 80% of the population is born with something called a quirk. And the quirk basically makes everybody into a superhero um, or a supervillain, depending on what kind of you know emotional disposition they have. Um, but they basically just popped up one day out of nowhere, these quirks. And now they're living in a society where 80% of the people have some kind of superpower and they have to adapt the world into, you know, having these powers. Well, this boy who grows up idolizing this one person called All Might, he's like the hero of heroes. He's like the Superman of Japan kind of thing. And he just grows up just idolizing. All he wants to do is be just like him. He is his hero, he is his idol, and he just wants to do nothing more but to smile and have his smile bring calm and peace to those who see it. Because they know that if they see that smile, they know that everything's going to be okay kind of thing. And that's all he wants is that kind of to be the world's savior kind of thing or just be the savior and being born without powers that's very much unlikely well he ends up running into his his hero uh one day uh after a villain tries to basically take his body as a skin suit and his hero saves him and he freaks out holds on to his hero as his hero is getting ready to take off and he's flying through the air kind of thing um and finally they land and he gets the nerve to ask him, he's like, you know, I was born without powers, without a quirk. Is there any way I can be like you and protect people and be a hero? And basically his hero looks at him and says, no, no, there's no way that you can do that without a quirk. And even with a quirk, some quirks are, are better than others kind of thing. So... It's one of those that without a quirk, you're basically hopeless. Just go home and be a, be, basically he's like, be a cop, you know, because pretty much the cops are there. Um, they are just mostly the 20% of people who don't have powers, but they still want to, you know, serve society kind of thing. And it just crushes him, absolutely crushes him. Well, turns out that All Might was in a battle that nobody had heard of. And in this battle, he was very badly hurt. And he can only sustain his superhero form for like three hours a day at the time that he meets uh, this kid. And he basically used up all of his hero time with this kid kind of messing around with him. And turns out the villain that they picked up together uh, escaped because of Izuku inter interfering with All Might. Well, all of a sudden, this villain gets a hold of another boy, and it's this a boy that uh, Izuku grew up with in school. Now, they're, they're friends, but it's one of those that they kind of grew apart because the other boy, like, picked on him growing up. Uh, they used to be friends, but then the friend kind of got pig-headed when uh, his quirk developed, and it was a really powerful quirk, even from a young age kind of thing. So he sees that his friend's being attacked by this villain and his friend can't defend himself. So even without powers, his body just moves. It just is instinctual that he has to go and help his friend once he realizes it's him. And then all of a sudden, bam, he, he's there and he's just tugging. He's not doing a thing. He's not doing anything to help, but he's just there trying. You know, even all the other heroes that are around are like... Uh, all the other heroes are basically just standing by because they can't do anything either. And All Might is standing in the background in his normal form watching this happen, watching this unfold, and he gets inspired uh, by this kid to push beyond the three-hour limit that he that he's limited to and rescue uh, both of them. And that's when he is told that there is a way to become a, a hero. And the story kind of picks up from there. I'm not going to say too much more. 
but yeah, it's such a good series and it just follows this kid Izuku after he gets powers and he goes to this spe special high school that is made for training heroes and he's sitting there not only trying to uh, navigate the world of high school but trying to navigate you know growing into these powers that that he's able to get and you know because his body's just not accustomed to these powers you know because most people when they get the powers they're born with them and they grow into them and they adapt their body adapts to having them but his body has never had to adapt to having these and these powers are so far above and beyond anybody else and the whole tagline of the the show is this is the story of how he became the greatest superhero ever kind of thing so you already know the ending of the whole series kind of thing. You know he's going to become the greatest superhero ever. But this is the tale of how everything... It's kind of like a How I Met Your Mother kind of thing. It's like, well, we know he meets the mother. It's just how do you lead up to meeting the mother kind of thing. Let me catch up with the chat and then we'll get going from there. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Eli says, yes. Okay, nice, nice. I, uh, I'll definitely have to check that one out. Eli also says, do you want my username? Yeah, go ahead, Eli. Go ahead and send it to me, and I'll send you a friend request uh, later on after the stream. Uh, Dust Money says, good evening, Big Daddy. Hope you and your family are doing well. How is Mrs. D doing? Dust Bunny, both uh, Mrs. D and myself are doing fantastic tonight. So I was going around telling everybody. I'll go ahead and say it again because I'm just one proud papa right now. Um... Our daughter, for the first time tonight, said, I love you for the first and second time. Um, yeah, we are just absolutely buzzing right now. Just having a great, great night. Uh, and it, it's just, it started out strong, uh, a strong night. Ended up going out for ice cream. Uh, got to see her little face, you know, covered in chocolate. And it's, it's that kind of nice cream kind of stuff. So it's the less sugar, less calories, all that stuff. So we're not, uh, not worried about her, you know, having something like that. Um... <laughs> but yeah, uh, seeing her little face just covered in chocolate and she's just, uh, she started saying ice cream for the first time uh, today. So she's like, ice cream, ice cream. You know, and she'll sit there and she'll shout it kind of thing because she doesn't, you know, she's not even two years old. So she doesn't know how to modulate her voice or anything like that. She'll just kind of, you know, say things. And when she's excited, she shouts them. So it's ridiculously cute. And me personally, I don't care if she shouts. Um... It's, it's one of those. She'll sit there and literally just start shouting and making noises in the grocery store. And it's because she can hear her echo kind of thing. So she'll sit there and just be like, ah, 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 just at the top of her voice. And it's not like she's a super, like, loud, ear-piercing voice or anything like that. But it's just, it's cute and it's funny. And most people, you know, walk by, they'll smile and get a big grin on their face because they can see that she's just a nice, happy baby and, and whatnot. But, uh... Oh, that was something else that I ended up doing tonight. Uh, not only did I cook uh, the eggplant chicken parmesan tonight, I ended up cooking, uh, I made some more uh, beef broth tonight. So I'm, it's actually cooking on the stove as we speak. So really happy about that. Uh, going to make me some uh, some beef broth rice maybe tomorrow or something like that. Uh, and I tell you what, if, uh, if you don't know how to make beef broth, uh, at home, learn how to make it. It is so much better and so much better for you than whatever you can buy there at the stores. Um, especially if you use things like natural bones and stuff like that for the bone broth. Um, like me, I ended up using some neck bones, some oxtail, and uh, cow marrow bones. Like cow leg marrow bones. And the marrow bone specifically has tons and tons of collagen within it. So anybody out there who uses collagen uh, supplements or anything like that, like the powders and stuff like that, this is like a really good way to get a nice little boost of collagen in there. Uh, it's so good and it's, it's like so much better for you. You can control the salt levels so you're not getting you know massive amounts of salt in your in your broth. Uh, it's a much r richer, deeper flavor. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's just, it's been a fantastic, fantastic night. Really just been, uh, really just been on cloud nine tonight. 
you know, her, her saying, you know, I love you, not once, but twice. And the first time she said it with just me in the room, and then I freaked out and shouted for my wife. It's like, babe, get in here, get in here now. And the way I shouted, I guess she was worried because she thought that, you know, our daughter got hurt or something. And she's like, what, what, what's going on, what's going on? And all of a sudden, I'm like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. She said, I love you. And she's like, what? And I missed it. I missed the first I love you. And it's like, yes, you did. <laughs> and then I, we sat there for like 20-some minutes just trying to coax it back out of her. It's like, come on, come on, say I love you, say I love you. And finally, finally, she ends up saying it. And I'm like, yes. Oh, like we just, we let out a big shout out, hooray. And, you know, in, in our daughter, she's like, once that, like we, like, made such a big fuss about it she's sitting there clapping and she's like yay and she's shaking her arms all happy and stuff like she's happy because we're happy oh it was just it was so much fun so much fun let's see uh eli says okay eli yeah i'll definitely uh like i said i'll send you a friend request uh later on tonight after the stream i'll look uh i'll look back on this uh dust bunny sending a whole bunch of hearts and vortex says uh, you got to teach us, BDD. Um, I can see it now. BDD cooking. Hey, you know what? I absolutely could. Uh, I could start a whole new channel called BDD cooking. <laughs> Big Daddy Dave cooking. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, I, I'm never going to claim to be the world's best cook, but uh, I, I, I do my fair share, and I certainly keep my wife happy with my cooking. So, uh, it's... It's one of those things, it's funny, I was uh, roaming around the internet the other day, and I stumbled across somebody, I don't remember what her name was, but she's uh, made the claim of, I don't understand it when people say I can't cook, kind of thing, and it's, it's often something you hear younger people say, it's like, oh, well, I can't cook, and her argument was, well, what, you can't follow a recipe, like, you can't... Uh, like, like, what, what is it, like, why can't you cook? It's like, you know, I might not know how to, it, like, if somebody said, make me a chicken ca casserole, well, I might not be able to make them a ca chicken casserole, but I can go look up a recipe and make the chicken casserole kind of thing, and it was one of those, like, how she was saying it, like, obviously she was being very contentious about it, but it's one of those, like, okay, yeah, like, she kind of has a point, it's like, you know, yeah, you're not going to be an expert the first time you cook something or, or the first several times you're going to cook something. But all it takes is time and, and practice and repetition, you know, kind of thing. And that's that's basically how I started. I, I really didn't cook anything until after I was, uh, you know, in a relationship kind of thing. And it was like, it's so much cheaper and easier. And, and her also, her contention was is that people, you know, sit there and argue, oh, well, I'm, I'm really broke right now, or I'm really this, or I'm really that. Um, and then you, like, sit back and you th figure it out. It's like, well, you know, a lot of times people who are, uh, and this isn't always the case. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of summarizing what she was saying. So this, these are not my words. But she was sitting there with like, well, a lot of times people are, you know, going out to eat and they're spending time. And she was specifically focused on young people in particular. Um, and, and she's like, because she's a younger person too. So she's saying, well, you know, yeah, most times it's because you're going out to eat and you're spending, you know, $10 here, or $20 here. And it's like, oh, well, if I try to make this at home, it never turns out the way that it does at the restaurant or that it doesn't turn out the way that this or that or the other thing. And it's like, yeah, and it's not going to turn out that way the first time you make it or it might not turn out the second time. But eventually you, you figure out the techniques with time, just like anything that we do in life. You, you try it, you repeat it, you try it, you repeat it, you try, you fail, you try, you fail, and eventually you get to the point where now all of a sudden it's getting better, it's getting better. And oftentimes too, like if somebody said like, and again, these are her words, not mine. If somebody's following a recipe, they'll often like substitute things in and out of the recipe. They're not actually following the recipe to the letter kind of thing. And she's like, that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they don't follow a recipe. They'll sit there and substitute things here and there because they think that it'll taste better kind of thing or it'll be more suited to their palate 
And what they don't realize is that, well, if it turns out not to be, you know, what you thought it was, it's oftentimes because you introduce something that wasn't part of the original intent kind of thing so it's one of those like it kind of like struck home with there it is i'm looking for the, i'm looking for my box where's the box what's in the box such a good movie anybody who can uh, name that movie I'll, I'll give you a virtual high five right now oh ooh, ooh. get 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 back here We're picking up the trees. We're picking up the tree. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Mine, mine, mine. Come on, there we go. Boop, 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 boop. Ah, stop it. All right, let me catch it. Let me catch up here. Um, Eli says. And it also without the comma and no space. Okay, gotcha, bud. I will definitely, uh, like I said, definitely. So it's it's the eBay seven uh, eBay seven one eight three. Uh, Jody says congratulations, buds. Thank you, bud. I appreciate it. And Eli says, can you type your username in the chat and I can send you a friend request? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. What is my username nowadays? I changed it here. Uh, I believe it's BDD Gaming One. I believe it's BDD Gaming One. Um, don't quote me at the moment. I'll look it up here after uh, after the stream. Uh, oh, there's more trees over here. Let's see what kind of kind of volume do we got going on so far Ooh, 72,000 not bad not bad See this, this exactly what I'm talking about. This is why I love this specific mod. I mean, look at all that. All those trees we just cleared them all down, just in a lickety split flash. 134,000 liters of trees, just like nothing, like nothing. And now all of a sudden we're like here, we're good to go, and bam. I mean, you can do it like that, too, or you can do like how I'm doing and just cutting a whole load of them down and then just picking them up as you go along. Like, I mean, it, there is no wrong way. You know, if you need to be a little bit more precise, like if you're on the side of a hill or something like that, the side of a cliff, you can cut one at a time, and then as it's starting to fall, you can then kind of click on the button to pick it up kind of thing so it won't fall out, like, out of reach. I can't tell you the number of times I've done that on, on certain maps where I'll be cutting a tree on the side of the hill and I want to catch it, but it doesn't fall the way I expect it to. It bumps into another tree or you know something along those lines, and all of a sudden it falls into a place where I, either I can't get it and it's just you know a waste. Uh-oh. <gasps> I think I reached my limit. Ah, <laughs> nice! Nice. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Eli says, uh, I search for uh, BDD Gaming 1. Uh, so it's BDD Gaming, the number one, all smashed together. There's no spaces. Uh, Dust Bunny says, Big Daddy, are you cu uh, are you cutting down all the trees? I am. I'm cutting them all down. So, Dust Bunny, where you see those buildings over there, I own all those buildings over there. And there were trees all the way out to there. And we, I'm cutting down everything. <gasps> I can see my field right over there. We're getting closer and closer. But, yeah, no, I'm cutting everything down because I'm going to make a monster of a field. 
over here. Now, this is the only downside to this specific cutter here is that if a tree is already down in the ground, it is almost impossible to get it to, to intake. You kind of have to do like what I did there and just kind of get it to sp spit in there and like force it in. And some, it's, it doesn't always work. It's a real pain. But uh, we got eight minutes before all the stuff has space to move. I do find that if you hit the trees on the top, on the thinnest part of the tree, that will sometimes uh, more easily accept. Here is my grass field right here. So yeah, I'm going to be making a whole new field, and it's going to be an absolute beast of a field. And we're going to be using uh, either barley, wheat, something along those lines to be able to uh, help feed our chickens and, and do all that. So that's, that's kind of the premise behind all this work that we're doing here. We're just cutting everything down so we can make a monster of a field. And we're desperately trying to get all this work done before uh, March, I believe it was. Because in March is the kind of last planting season, last day of planting. So if I can get that done before then, we can... Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. Could we not... There we go. Okay, now we're free. Let's see. Eli says, uh, I did that one, uh, I did that, I just used voice type. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And nothing came up, huh? Uh, okay, well, here, hold on. Uh, is there a way for me to see? Yeah, there it is. BD Gaming 1. There we go. Ah! Holy cow. We're bouncing around there. Yeah, like I said, Eli, worst case scenario, I'll look you up uh, after stream and we'll uh, we'll get that all set up. All right, so we got five more minutes in game before we uh, get that kind of payout there. You know what? That tree is a bit far out for my liking. We're going to we're going to get rid of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Eli, that, that's, you know, that's funny, good point. You wrote down uh, DBB. It's actually BDD. Big Daddy Dave. So, see if that was, uh, that was the issue there, bud. We are so close to our to our field now. I love it. Alright, we are about full up here. Alright. Let's run this down. 
Benji, how's it going? Hope you're having a good night so far. It's been a fantastic evening over here tonight. All right. Actually, uh, I need to take a few minutes here. Uh, I'm going to put the stream on hold. I will be right back. Uh, my wife is calling me and she needs help with something, so I'll be right back. So sorry about that. I am back. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, whoops, I just headbutted the microphone. The missus needed help with uh, grabbing a few things. She's trying to work on something for the upcoming wedding here soon. And there we go. Let's dump that out. Uh, we got her sister's wedding here coming up. Uh, before too much like did that empty? What happened? No, it couldn't have. Oh. There we go. Okay. But uh so she's sitting in the back right now and she's working on uh wedding projects and she's got one thing back there that's a bit heavy for her, you know, especially because she's she's pregnant, so I told her, hey, if if you do this, give me a call and I'll, I'll come and help. There we go. All right, so that's all emptied out. And we're at the top of the hour, 800,000 liters of wood here at the uh, carpentry here. And we're going to be really close to wood chips there too. That's nice. That's awesome. All right, let me catch up with what everybody's saying so far. Dust Bunny says, uh, evening, Mr. Benji. Uh, how's Benji and Alvin tonight, sir? Uh, Benji says, it's going absolutely amazing. Awesome. Love it. Love to hear it. Eli says, do, you, uh, do any of you guys know what Matt is playing on? Um, I have no idea. Uh, Benji says, uh, 
Benji and Elvin are both sleeping at the moment. Dust Bunny. Eli says, what's the map uh, name you're using? So the map I'm using is called uh, Maypole Farm. That's the map that I'm on at the moment. Uh, Dust Bunny says, Eli, uh, the name of the map is Maple Farm and is actually in the title of the video. Yes, yes, it is. Whoops, oops, oops. And I'm dropping headphones. I'm still punching the mic. Hi, yay, yay. Let's, uh, okay. Woosa. <gasps> there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and get another load of wood chips because why not? But you figure. With this whole range here, this whole forestry area that we've been working on, we have gotten, I don't know, almost 2 million liters of both wood chips and wood out of all of this. I mean, that's, that's nothing to sneeze at. 2 million liters of each, uh, uh, 1 million liters of each product, and we've been processing things along the way too, so... That's what I'm saying, you know, it's, it's probably closer to 2 million rather than the 100 or 1.6 million. Oops. Uh, let's actually get on top of this. There we go. I know I can be hitting these stumps and whatnot with the devourer here, but I think I'll go over them with the other... Uh, the other stump grinder that I have and I think that'll clear them out a little bit easier I'm also uh, just gonna start tearing up the ground because for some reason like I try to test cut and it might be because I'm in the middle of winter but just I wasn't able to get any product off of the ground so like I said it might be because of winter it might be because uh, there's just not any product to get period off of this uh, field like this grass is just not harvestable grass but at this point, I'm okay with that, and I just need to make sure that we're done before March, um, which obviously we're going to be. I mean, we're in December, like not even through December yet, and we're almost done. Go ahead and get myself a... Oh, no, 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 don't catch it, catch it, no! Ah. See if I can get this one. There it goes. I'm just gonna keep ramming into all these trees and boop. Ugh, this is going so good. You figure this is the sixth episode. Uh, post episode 13 and 13 is where we started cutting down trees we've gotten six live streams in and we are almost done with this whole forestry area this didn't take near, near as long as i thought it was going to take and had i stuck with my original kind of method of actually cutting these trees down and loading them and moving them over it would have taken that long it would have taken you know probably 12 streams 20 streams you know, post episode 13. So I'm glad I finally kind of, you know, decided against uh, doing it the kind of traditional way and just did it this way because this is definitely working out much better, much faster, and a lot less painless, or a lot more painless. Oh, there we go. We are full. Yeah, I mean, look at look at this. This is going to be a monster of a field when this is all done. Like this is just going to be a behemoth. Like I said, I think I'm going to decorate the lane, the drive lane, uh, going down to this area here. I already opened up a couple of driveways into the field over here, so we can now get to our farm a little bit more directly. Uh, let's go here. We already filled up the other one. OK. 
keep dumping this out, and then I'm gonna catch up with the chat and see what everyone's saying at this point. We've got uh, do, 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 uh, Vortex. Uh, you're the only reason I started playing this map. Well, hey, I appreciate it. Um, like I said, I, I think that this map definitely deserves uh, a lot more love. Uh, Cavalier Roy is a great map maker, and I think he made an absolute just... Uh, what's, what's a good word? An absolute top-rated map on this one. Like, this one, I absolutely love it because of just how modular it is. I've said it many times, I've explained it several times as well, but just the, the modularity of this map is just second to none. There's no other map that allows you this level of uh, customization and detail work than, uh, than this one here. And a lot of uh, Kevlar Roy's maps do the same exact thing. Not to this, it, not to this level that this map does, but it's it's up there it, it's definitely up there with with this one and then uh let's see we've got uh the map is sure dark even in the daytime so yeah so right now we're in december and yeah the, the map does uh have an air of darkness to it um which i kind of like it, it just reminds me of being up north um where I grew up there in Michigan, it was during the winter times. It's dark. I mean, it's always dark. There is no uh, no sun. Like I, being down here in Florida, being up in Michigan, were like night and day. The the worlds that you exist in um, during the winter time, you have overcast, cloudy days all winter long. You hardly ever get a break from it it's dark it's gloomy i mean to to some people it'd even be like depressing on how uh how it can be you, you get very little in the ways of uh of cold blue sky days up in michigan during the winter time uh during the summertime you'll get you know get the sunny days but it's one of those you might see 80 90 degree days at least when i was there um maybe a month or two uh, during the summertime, and then you're down into like the 70s, and you know, d bombing up and down between you know, uh, 60, 20, 30, 40, you know, kind of up and down kind of weather, you know, during the spring and fall. I'm sorry, yeah, during the spring and fall. Uh, let's see. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. This is all cleared out. We've got, yeah. Uh, almost 900,000 liters of wood chips, 800,000 liters of wood. That's chugging along making pellets and furniture. And this is making pellets. And that's just the little engine that could right here. Let's see something just real quick. Let's see what we got. Oh, 130,000. This is going to fill up before too much longer. And if we can get 200,000 liters of pellets, that means that it's going to be somewhere in the ballpark of... Um, 400, no, be closer to like $500,000 if we get one of these full. One of these full would be about 500, 500 grand. So yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be a nice little payday. You can see I did clear out a couple of entrances over here. Where were they? Yep, there's one right there. Yep, there's the road there, and then there's another one just over here. Where'd that one go? There it is, right there. There's the other opening. So yeah, these are going to be the two entry points into this field. They're right across the street from uh, my other entryways into my main farm. So yeah, that's it's just... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Going good. Going real good. I'm happy. Happy, happy. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. We've got... Uh, oh, wow. I'm way behind. Uh, Saskatchewan. My favorite music is real 90s and 80s, 70s, and 2000s country music. Hey, I'm right there with you. Love me some country. Jay Meister. How's it going? Hi, y'all. Uh, Dust Bunny says, uh, Saskatchewan. Uh, who is your favorite female country singer? I like Reba McIntyre. Love me some Reba. Uh, 
I like Gretchen Wilson. Gretchen's good too. Eli says you should try the Axe mod. Oh, uh, I think, yeah, I think that one just came out here recently, if I'm not mistaken. It was the, uh, uh, oh, goodness, I can't remember the company name. Um, anyways, I, I think I know which one you're talking about. That, that is, looked like a cool mod. Uh, Jay Meister said, yep, it is. Uh, Saskatchewan says, my favorite country singer of all time is George Jones uh, and Alan Jackson and then Waylon Jennings. So, George Jones... Uh, <laughs> uh, we actually got to see George Strait, not the same artist, I know, but uh, we got to see George Strait in his uh, kind of farewell tour uh, down there in Tampa uh, several months ago, and that was that was an awesome show. I highly, highly recommend that one. Um, so much fun. But yeah, all those artists, absolutely love them all. George Jones, Alan Jackson, Waylon Jennings, really good. Uh, Jay Meister says, yeah, totally agree. Saskatchewan says, uh, I listen to real country music when I play FS22. It goes good together all 100%. Uh, real grain farmer in Saskatchewan. Nice. And my favorite music is real 90s and, yep, 80s, 90s, and 2000s country. Yep. Like I said, bud, I'm right there with you. I'm, uh, I'm a child of the 80s, so I, uh, got very, very similar taste in music. That, that you do so very very nice yeah and, and I, I'm pretty much do the same thing if I'm not listening to like podcasts or something like that when I'm doing like farming behind the scenes or whatever then I'm, I got music playing in the background and it's typically uh, country or uh, like rock southern rock um, but yeah co country is like my jam uh, I actually grew up with country uh, because of my mother she, she like instilled country music into me uh, when I was growing up, and that was what we listened to, is the, the old, like, 80s, 90s, well, really, like, 70s, 80s, and 90s uh, country. Uh, yeah, love me some Alan Jackson, Tim McGraw, uh, George Strait, Brooks and Dunn, uh, Kenny Chesney. Um, oh, love me some Toby Keith. Uh, especially like 90s Toby Keith that uh, that was like when he was in his real like big time heyday I don't see too much from him nowadays though which is a real shame I, I like I said I miss him I, I really like Toby Keith uh, growing up a lot of good songs came out from him. Anybody here remember the uh, the Toby Keith and Dixie Chicks kerfluffle way back when? How they all kind of went running circles around each other. And uh, I know there was a lot of people that either fell on one side of that uh, one side of that uh, fight or the other. And uh, I guess it got so bad that the Dixie Chicks kind of stopped doing country music there for a while. They went more of a poppy kind of tune. And I'm sure just like anything, it's more complicated than what I'm making it sound like. But I really didn't pay much attention. It's just, I just remember it being a thing. Like all of these two, you know high profile artists or, or one group, one artist or, you know, going round around it, you know, against each other kind of thing. And me, I just nod and smile. It's like, you know what? Are you playing good music? Good. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Let's see. Saskatchewan says, uh, hate the new country, uh, not country, it's pop. Yes, 100% right there with you. My favorite rock band is Rio, REO Speedwagon. Yes, a good old REO. Love me some good REO. Um, one of my favorite bands growing up, and not a lot of people know this band. Um, and it was specifically because of my father. He, he played them. Uh, he actually used to be in a band growing up, and he used to be uh, like the kind of sound tech uh, for the, for the group, and uh, he played one song for quite some time, and I just ingrained in me. 
And for the longest time, I actually forgot the song. I had I completely forgotten about it. Um, but it was a group called Pablo Cruz. They were basically a one-hit wonder way back when. Um, I mean, they had several, you know, they had about one good album, I should say. Not like a one-hit wonder, but one, one album wonder. And uh, it was a song called Running Away was the uh, was the song name and that that one it's got a really nice piano uh, pretty much like a piano solo uh, within the song and it just, it just really hits really hard really really loved that song growing up and like I said I've forgotten about it for years and then one day my dad was playing it in the background um, hadn't heard it forever and then all of a sudden just like boom it came like rocketing to me like a, a wave of, uh, of memories I was like, holy cow, that's that song. I've been trying to figure this song out for years. And, you know, by this time, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, what's that application that you can have on your phone and it listens to music and tells you what the song is? Um, oh, you know what? I've got it on my phone. Why am I even asking? Uh, Shazam. Shazam is the, is the app. Uh, so I bust out Shazam and I, you know, clicked it and it's like, oh yeah, this is Pablo Cruz and you used to love this song when you were a kid. And it's like, yeah, I know. I know. I've been trying to find this song for years. He's like, well, why didn't you just ask me? It's like, oh, what am I going to ask you? The song that has a piano and goes, da, 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 like, <laughs> come on. Like, I remember having this full blown conversation with him and he's like, oh, well, you could have hummed a few bars. It's like. Well, yeah, and I could have done a little jig on top of it, too, but it's not going to help you remember what song I'm talking about. <laughs> like, come on. And it was like it was something I listened to when I was like, I don't know, like four or five, like something like that. It, it was it was one winter in particular where I would listen to it constantly and then just all of a sudden we just stopped playing it all together kind of thing and yeah it, it was like it was one of my one of those songs that when you're a kid you got on repeat kind of thing it was of course before the internet and all that stuff so you know listen to you always have something on something on repeat and that was the one thing we had that we could put on repeat and yeah, but I'm sure that eventually it was like any parent does. They get sick and tired of hearing the same thing over and over. You know, in my day, you know, it was like Barney, you know, the I love you. You know, listen to that over and over and over and, you know, makes parents who are armed want to, you know, <laughs> think horrible things. <laughs> but uh, at bare minimum, they want to destroy their TV. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it was one of those that I'm sure my parents were more than happy to, you know, stop listening to that for a while. And, and, I, and like I said, I vividly remember the conversation with him. He's like, oh, yeah, it's Pablo Cruz and running away. And like, you used to love this song as a kid. And he's like, I know. I know I love this song as a kid. And I used to, I've been trying to figure out what this song was for years. Oh, well, you should have told me. <laughs> well, if I knew what it was called, I would have asked. And it's like one of those that was so far forgotten in time that I've forgotten, like, the tempo. I've forgotten, like, all I remembered was the piano. That's all I remembered. And when I heard that piano section for the first time, because I just so happened to walk in, you know, to his house, and he was playing in the background kind of thing, and I just freaked i just absolutely freaked out like i've been listening wanting to hear this song for years like since i was a kid and i haven't been able to find it Ugh. but you know what if you have something that has happened to you like that just something that has been lost to time kind of thing and you finally rediscovered it let me know let me know what it is because uh like, it, it's so amazing and it's such a sigh of relief like i remember just this weight being lifted off my shoulder after years of chasing this down and trying to figure it out and just pretty much giving up, you know, because that's all you could really do at that time is just, you know, meh, hope that hope and pray that you came across it one day. Let's see. Saskatchewan says, well, I'm heading out by all. 
Well, Saskatchewan, I hope you have yourself a fantastic night. Hope you have a good one, and we will see you again next time. Let's see. Oh, why am I there? No. No. Come on. Come on. Oh, Jody, I see that you're uh, liking the uh, liking the stuff on Instagram. I appreciate it again. Thank you so much. Dust Bunny says, uh, Pablo Cruz is actually still playing. Really? A uh, friend of mine knows him personally. No kidding. Says uh, he's very arrogant. <laughs> oh no, that's really, that kind of bums me out. I had no idea they were still playing. That's wild. But you know what? Good for them. I mean, like I said, it, I only remember like the one album and it had like four or five like really really good songs like i said like running away was it was a good one there was uh uh not around the world worlds away worlds away um that was a really good one um you know what I'm not even gonna sit here and guessing when when i have the internet i can look it up on spotify pablo Cruz. Pablo Cruz. Nope. Uh, doo -doo. Nope. Right there. Pablo Cruz artist. Uh, Love will find a way. That's a great song. Uh, what you gonna do? Um, yeah. See, the song. The songs that I remember vividly. Like they're not even on this this top list here. Like the top five list, the ones I remember, like I said, running away with that uh, that piano, oh, that one really, really haunted me for years. Uh, Dust Bunny says good night to Saskatchewan, and Dust Bunny also says my two favorite R and R bands are the Eagles, love Eagles, and Credence Clearwater Credence Clearwater Revival. That is one heck of a name, <laughs> one heck of a name. I love me some uh, some. Uh, CCR. Love CCR. Uh, the Eagles are still playing. Not sure about CCR. Um, yeah, I don't know either. I, I know Eagles are still playing. Um, that would be a good concert to go to. to go see the Eagles. Especially if they're jamming on some of their greatest hits. But oftentimes you go to a concert nowadays, you're only hearing like the most... Uh, up-to-date tunes and all that stuff you're not you're not gonna get like the really classic ones that's what that's what honestly what though what I liked about the George Strait concert is that it was all like the the top of the charts classics uh, from George Strait that was so much fun um, oh goodness what are some of the ones um, oh man now I'm drawing a big old blank as the ones that he played there was like I think there was like Amarillo by Morning. There was uh, the Fireman, um, and it was with uh, uh, um, Lady Lady Antebellum and um, uh, Chris Stapleton was the other artist. And Chris Stapleton, he was amazing live, absolutely amazing. Him and his wife. Because uh, his wife sits there and sings with him too, and wow, were they fantastic! That that was one like I like Chris Stapleton. I liked his music, and I wasn't too sure about how I was going to feel about going to see him live, but that was an amazing concert. And then they did a couple of uh, duets, him and George Strait together. Those were really good, like a couple of new originals, kind of thing. And that yeah, I I really loved that concert. That was a good one. Uh, let's see. Eli says you should do a light. Uh, oh yeah, the lightsaber. Um, that one I might save until May the fourth, kind of thing. You know, May the fourth be with you. Uh, Dust Bunny says uh, their next tour date is at Bears Den, uh, Seneca Niagara Casino and Hotel in Niagara Falls. After that, they'll be in Florida Theater in Jacksonville. Okay, so that's not uh, not too far away from me. Uh, supposed to play April 18th in Florida. Nice. My daughter just went to the Eagles concert over the past weekend. They are playing a double with... St Ooh, Steely Dan. Ooh, that'd be a good one, too. That'd be a good concert. 
Yeah, the Eagles, man. That would, that would be a really cool concert to see, too. See them live. Um, yeah, just they got oh, so many good songs. So many classic the Eagles. Oops. Yeah, it's funny. Actually, my first concert ever that I went to, and I'm, I'm not a big concert person because, again, I'm not a big city person, and that's really the only place you're going to go to see concerts are out in the in the city. Um, why am I not seeing... There is a reticle. But uh, the first concert I ever saw, I was 22. I went with a friend of mine, and it was to... Uh, a heavy metal concert to see Disturbed. Um, who was it? Disturbed, El Nino, and and some other band. I I don't remember. Oh, uh, Chevelle. That's what it was. It was Chevelle, El Nino, and uh, Disturbed. And and I I do like uh, Disturbed uh, from way way back when. Um, but that was uh, that was a huge culture shock to me because, like I said, I'd never been to a concert before that, and then all of a sudden going there, going to it was at the uh, it was at this uh, Michigan State Theater uh, there in downtown Detroit, and number one, going to Detroit by by itself was a huge shock. Um, I'd never been there before by myself, kind of thing. I was there with my buddy kind of thing and we were like I would like I said I was 22 he was maybe I think he's what two years younger than I am so he was you know 20 at the time 20, yes I was 21 22 he, he was about 19 20 give or take um and we went there and, and we saw the concert it was a good concert um it was during the the believe tour uh so it was disturbed second al album that they put out so that kind of dates it and uh, yeah, it was it was a great tour. Really good. Uh, really had a lot of fun with that one. Very high energy kind of kind of tour. But, uh, but yeah, then uh, went to some other concerts and saw. Um, let's see, Tim McGraw uh, with my wife. Uh, that was that was a long time ago. I've really only been to like a handful of concerts. Uh, just. Like I said, I'm not huge on going to the city unless I'm kind of almost dragged to it. <laughs> and, and if you ask my wife, most of the time it's kicking and screaming. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Pablo Cruz is who I was referring to coming. Oh, 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 gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Wow, that's that's that just blows my mind that they're still touring and that they're still kind of kind of out there. Like I said... Uh, and for all I know, my dad is just 100% wrong about it. But he, he made the he's the one that made the claim that they were like the one album wonder kind of thing. But I mean, they must be more popular than than that because I mean, wouldn't still be touring if they weren't doing something. But yeah, I, I uh, love that song "Running Away" and just. I, it just really, when it finally found it again after so many years, um, just all the memories and all the, the emotions that I could remember from being a kid and listening to it over and over and over and all the good times I had growing up just came flooding back to me. And it was like one of those really powerful, like just memory triggers, just all of a sudden it's like, bam, just like everything came flooding in and it was just absolutely wild when that uh, when that happened. We are just chugging, chugging, chugging along here. And you know what? While I'm thinking of it, 
do a hard shift here real quick and get this all out of the way. I want to go ahead and give the channel shout outs to my tier two members. Mark K, thank you so much for being a tier two member. I greatly appreciate you. And right now you are the only one. If you are interested in becoming a channel member, go ahead and check out the link in the description below or on the main channel page, there is a join button. And there you can uh, take a look at the various perks that we have available. Uh, we have two channel levels. Tier one gives you access to perks such as early access to edited content such as live streams and channel shorts. You also get custom badges, custom emojis, and that's for 99 cents a month. For 4.99, you can gain access to the tier two level, and that one gets you access to exactly what you just heard here now, the channel member shout outs. Every single time we do a live stream, we will get, go ahead and shout your name out uh, as being a tier two channel member. And all the money that goes into that uh, is specifically as a uh, means to help grow and sustain the channel. Um, we got some big, big ideas coming down the pipe. We really want to, well, we, I really want to start uh, doing some really awesome things, not only uh, for the channel, but for the community at large. Um, like I said, I've got some really cool ideas. I've met some really awesome people along the way uh, and really would love to do uh, kind of some real cool community-based stuff um, kind of moving forward. So, um, but I mean, all that's going to take is it's time and and money, you know, kind of the, the dirty word, money. Um, but no, like I said, it's one of those that I'd really, really love to be able to do those things. Uh, I've got them kind of been cooking in the background. Uh, just gonna like I said it's gonna take time it's gonna take time we can continue to grow the way we're doing um, actually before we hopped on the stream tonight we're almost up to uh, 12,010 subscribers to the channel um, 12 wow well, no sorry <laughs> 12,000 wrong 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 1,210 that's the right number Whew. I would love to have 12,000 but Maybe one day. Maybe one day we'll get there. But, uh... But no, just, uh... Long story short, if you, if you like the content, you like the channel, and want to help support us here, go ahead and uh, check it out. Uh, you can also do one-time donations, if that's uh, something you want to do. If you don't want to do a kind of, you know, a long-term, month-to-month kind of subscription thing, you know, totally understand that, too. But only do it if you can. If you can't do it, I completely understand. It's one of those that, uh, you know, not something that's necessary. That's also why we set the channel memberships and, and stuff up specifically the way we did it. So it's not something that's exclusive. You know, everybody gets the access to all the content. There is nothing that uh, somebody else gets that somebody else won't get. Uh, why am I not seeing there? Oh. Anyways. Uh. There's not something that somebody will get that somebody else won't get just because you're you're paying the subscription or something like that. It's uh, it, it's going to be the same content. You're just getting it just a little bit before everybody else does, kind of thing. Or you're gaining access to the badges and the emo uh, emojis and things like that. So, yeah, that's we specifically set it up to make sure that uh, you know everybody was going to be you know still a part of the channel, still a part of the you know, BDD family, as it were, and be able to uh, enjoy the content. All right, let's go ahead and grab the box. Let's find the box and start clearing up some of this mess. We can kind of gauge where we're, where we're standing. I think the box, I left it over here. I think that's it right there in front of me, actually. Let's see, and that reminds me, I need to check something just real quick. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Also, if you haven't already, please go ahead and, you know, hit the like button for me. It really helps out in the algorithms and really kind of, uh, you know, helps put me in front of more eyeballs. You know, potentially people who want to become, uh, you know, friends of the channel be able to come and hang out with us here like what we're doing here tonight uh 
like I said, it really does help out more than what uh, a lot of people realize. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that like button. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And not only uh, do I want to say thank yous to my tier twos like I did earlier, but I also want to thank you know all my members and all my subscribers and just anybody who's stopping by, anybody who's uh, just coming along for the ride. I greatly appreciate every single person out there. It is just an absolute uh, honor, you know, to see how well this channel is doing, how much we're growing from day to day. Uh, we're consistently and constantly, uh, you know, just elevating our game, elevating our, our subscriber count. And I cannot tell you just how incredibly happy and proud I am to, to see the channel growth uh, that we've been sustaining over the past year and a couple of months. So, yeah, it's just, ah, no, don't stop running away. So, yeah, like I said, thank you all so very, very much. It means the world to me to see how we're doing on this channel and how we're growing and how we're continuing to, you know, continuing to do bigger and better things. You know, like I said, we're still a small channel. We're still going to, you know, do small things but hopefully as time goes on and you know we start to get bigger and bigger we'll be able to do more and more you know that's that's the hope at least oh is it too heavy can i not lift oh i can it's, no stop Hi yeah What the Okay, apparently Apparently my uh tree did not want to go into the container. 134,000. Okay, that should be good. Let's go ahead and start uh using the treat of our uh look at all this. Look at this. This is crazy. I mean, there's not that much left. There really isn't. We're just chugging along and getting this done. I love it. Uh, let's quick uh, back to here. Oops, 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 oops. There we go. <laughs> uh, I don't know why, but I just I got a big chuckle about, out of uh, was it was it you Vortex or, or was it Jay Meister earlier who was saying uh, to start up a BDD cooking channel? You know what's funny uh, to kind of let you in on on something? I actually considered before doing a gaming channel. I actually considered doing a cooking channel. Um. I was really kind of considering, but then I got to thinking, it's like, no, nah, I really don't want to, uh, like, I don't want to be, like, on camera kind of thing. That that might be something I eventually grow into, uh, you know, putting my face on screen and doing all that kind of stuff, but it's just one of those where it really never, um, never really... kind of hit me as something I wanted to do at least right away you know throwing my face on screen and, and whatnot I, I don't mind being the voice uh, of the channel but I don't know M maybe one day maybe one day I'll, I'll show my uh, show my face on the channel and who knows who knows One day we'll see the face of BDD. Vortex, it was you. Okay, okay. But yeah, no, it's funny because, like I said, that was something I actually considered doing um, a long time ago, uh, long before I started this channel. And 
because like I said, I do enjoy cooking. I really enjoy being able to, to go on and uh, make really good meals. As a matter of fact, um, I do follow a YouTuber called Josh Weissman, and I ended up cooking his uh, Chick-fil-A sandwich a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, I tell you what, it was... When I say it was a hit, I ended up cooking it one time here at home for myself, my wife, or whatnot, and it was absolutely delicious. Just absolutely loved the way it turned out. Then I ended up cooking it for uh, my wife's family, and she's got a pretty big family, so I'm sitting there just cooking, 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 and they have it, and they are just going nuts over it. They went nuts over that sandwich. It's like, oh, it's better than Chick-fil-A. They're just absolutely going nuts over it then I ended up making it for my side of the family I ended up going up to Michigan one year and I made it for them and they're like oh my goodness this is insane this is so good and you know they're 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 eating like two monster sandwiches a piece like they're, they're not small sandwiches kind of thing because you're taking like a whole uh, boneless skinless chicken thigh and you're you're smashing out to where it's a little bit thinner kind of thing and then all of a sudden you're you're cooking it and you're frying it and going at you know going at it like that and they're eating like two big old honking sandwiches and <laughs> they're just they're just absolutely like no words are being shared just mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know just all the the happy noises kind of thing <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that was one of my most requested, uh, food items. Um, but no, here lately, one thing I've been making here lately, that's been absolutely just knocking it out of the park, especially with my wife, because she's, uh, because she's pregnant. Um, she, she's had these huge cravings for my, uh, my hamburgers I, I make these really awesome cheeseburgers and specifically I make this uh, burger sauce to go with them and oh man that sauce like the burgers are good the burgers are good by themselves don't don't get it wrong but you pair it with the burger sauce and oh it's on a whole nother level just an absolute you know absolute party in your mouth some reason i don't know why but it just just channeled ralphie may there and it's like get in my mouth it's so good so good <laughs> anybody here knows uh, ralphie may he's a a comedian who's well known for being incredibly large like 500 plus pound dude um i don't think he's alive anymore i think the uh I think the bigness uh, took him off this world, um, which is really sad because he had two kids and a wife and or whatnot. But uh, yeah, really, really funny guy, really funny comedian. Um, I remember watching uh, the first time I watched him was the tour Ostentatious, and I was just I was actually watching it. Yeah, Rip Ralphie May, one hundred percent. Uh, I, I do miss him. He was so funny. Uh, ended up watching uh, Ostentatious with my cousin when he lived here for a short time. And uh, we were just, our sides were hurting. We were laughing so hard. Like, we were laughing so hard that we started laughing at each other. Like, that's how uh, how funny it was. That's somebody. That's something I'll have to watch here again here soon. Is ostentatious and uh, girth of a nation and all the uh, all the various stand ups that he did. They were just oh, they were so good. But you know what it was? Is he reminded me of kind of the the southern. Uh, 90s 80s 90s comedian kind of thing just you know wasn't afraid to you know say what he wanted to say and there wasn't uh, anybody out there that was gonna you know kind of derail him from what he was saying 
Um, and I kind of I appreciate that, especially in the kind of world we live in now where, you know, you, you pretty much are forced to mind your P's and Q's and, uh, you know, for, for heaven forbid that you offend somebody. Because, you know, if the moment you offend somebody, that's the end of whatever it is that you're doing after you offend them kind of thing. It's, I don't know. Just, I never understood that mentality of, uh, being, being offended kind of thing. It's very rarely an emotion that I ever feel, um, because I just don't often let things bother me. It, it's very, very rare that I get kind of worked up over, uh, something, especially something somebody else is saying, but more just get worked up in general. My thing is I get worked up about traffic. <laughs> that's, that's what I get worked up over. It's like, oh, come on, I'm trying to make it over to the right lane and you're blocking me. What? What's going on? That kind of that kind of nonsense. Not like road rage or anything. I'm not sitting there like hanging halfway out the car door and, you know, getting all upset with people. But I'll sit there and just be, you know, talking to myself. It's like, come on, it's the one on the right. <laughs> you know, stupid, stupid things like that. It's, it's more just me venting than anything and that one I blame I blame that solely on my father because he he is the king of just babbling to your to oneself um, behind the wheel like saying all the most uh, like incoherent sentences because you're so fl frustrated and flustered with what's going on behind the wheel like you're not sitting there like taking it out on people you're not but you're just like I said, you're just venting kind of thing. And you, I guess it's just kind of a mechanism that uh, prevents you from, like, actually, you know, engaging in road rage. There we go. Let's see. Um... Vortex says, I feel like that was comedy as the whole back then. Yes, yes, absolutely. Like, people, I mean, back in, like, the 80s and 90s, and, and comedy's been going on for long before that, but from when I grew up, it was just, comedy was comedy. Like, people just said and did things and didn't worry about what people were going to think about it kind of thing. And they certainly didn't worry about offending people because it was it was intended to be a joke is just a joke and if you couldn't take the joke you got up and you left kind of thing you didn't you did make a scene you didn't try and you know hunt down for their job you didn't try and do all this you know nonsense you just moved on kind of thing but somewhere along the way people have become so soft and so sensitive over you know, silly, silly things that they just, there is no such saying as it's just a joke anymore. Or can't you take a joke kind of thing. It's like, no, the, people can't. And it's sad. It's really sad because, you know, you see comedy is just dying and like nothing is genuinely funny like where you get that huge belly laugh anymore it's so rare to find somebody like you get like the the ricky gervais you know kind of kind of comedians or the dave chappelle's nowadays where they are still like they're so big that you're not going to be able to dethrone them kind of thing but you don't get the the good up-and-comers anymore you know that that's eventually going to go the way of the dodo because you know people are so worried about you know who they're going to offend and is it going to be me next on the chopping block kind of thing it's sad it's really sad uh i like john panetta uh, i'm not familiar with john panetta but i've heard i've heard the name i just not uh, not seen like any of their routine or anything um but yeah, like I said, I'm like an old George Carlin. Uh, George Carlin. Um, I, I I did like, uh, or I do like Dave Chappelle. I do like uh, uh, T. 
Tim Brewer. Um, what else? Uh, I mean, I, I loved Adam Sandler back in the day, you know, back before he got into, like, the whole family-friendly kind of kind of roles in his movies. Um, you know, even, like, the old stand-up comedy bits that he used to do were just absolute gold. The SNL uh, stuff that he used to do was just absolute money. Um, like I said, like, Chris Farley was hilarious way back when, before he passed. Um... Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's 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 so many that we could just sit here and name drop. Um, yeah, just like I said, I, I just feel like comedy's dying. It's one of those like I don't feel like people are that adventurous anymore because they're they're just afraid. They're afraid of who they're gonna upset, and then they're not gonna be able to go beyond that. And you had that uh, instance of, uh, what's his name, Kevin Hart. He made a joke that uh, upset a lot of people. And he ended up having to, to step back from uh, from doing some kind of award show or something. This was a while ago. Um, and he's, he's a huge name. He's like a huge, huge name right now. And the fact that he felt like he had to like back down from whatever... Um, because of something that he said, you know, way back when, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's sad, it's disgusting, really, because, like I said, eventually everything's going to just be this bad, just bland, you know, not funny, not, not anything, if, uh, if things keep going the way they're going. Like I said, it was... Part of the reason why I started this channel and started doing what I do here is because, you know, wanted to make things that were, one, entertaining to me, but hopefully entertaining to other people and not let things kind of get in the way of the entertaining. Entertaining comes first. Everything else is secondary beyond that. So, I don't know. That's, uh... kind of how I f feel about it you know especially like in Hollywood with movies and stuff like you don't get like original anything anymore you always get these remakes and adaptations and you know and the, all this stuff inevitably gets you know filled with you know silly nonsense that are you know politically motivated or, or whatever that uh, have nothing to do with the story like, you can tell the people who have the IP have no love for the original IP whatsoever. They have to, you know, reimagine and, and bring it into the, the modern era kind of thing. And it inevitably just makes it into, into just trash. It's just garbage kind of stuff. I don't know. I wish there were more people who were able to get a hold of some of these IPs and really treat them with love and respect that a lot of them need and deserve. You know, if we're going to, you know, keep making these remakes and reboots and stuff like that, you know, instead of these people who have zero love for what the for what the intellectual property is, you know, get somebody in there who's actually going to treat it with kid gloves kind of thing and really, like, bring it home. Let's see... Uh, Vortex says uh, he's another big comedian. He says uh, he says it's the way it is. Yeah, um, like I said, I've heard I've heard of him. I just not seen any of his stuff. So it's one of those. Uh, whenever I get some extra time, I'm gonna have to. Like I said, I've I've got a bunch of homework, and it's just, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The the things that I need to see and things I need to check out, kind of thing. Um, one of these days going to have to get on board with uh, taking some time and checking it out. Uh, Eli says, bye, see you tomorrow. Eli, hope you have yourself a fantastic night. Appreciate you coming out and hanging out with us tonight. Like I said, I will, uh, after the stream, I'll take a look and see what I can do about getting you uh, added to the, uh, the friends list and all that. So we'll kind of go from there. 
Vortex also says, if you see the original Punisher movie, he's the big guy who cooks. Oh, no way! Oh, 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 oh. Um. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. That, that does sound familiar to me. John, what was it? P E. Oh, where was it? A uh, P I N E T T E. P I I N E T T E. That guy. Yes. Okay, I do recognize him. He's the guy who's in. Uh, was it Demolition Man? Wait, is he Demolition Man, or am I thinking somebody else? No, I think I think I'm. Mis no, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. We're we're doing research here. We're 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 figuring this out. He was in Junior. Okay, I do remember him in Junior. Oh yeah, it was the one with uh, with uh, Thomas Jane. That's right. He was in that movie. I completely forgot he was in that one. Wow. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. That's crazy. Huh. Anywho. Big guy that cooks. Yeah, wow. Completely forgot about that. No, and I thought he was the one in Demolition Man. He was the one with this, uh... Uh... What was that haircut called back in the 80s? Like, all the, the, the kind of punkers uh, loved him back in the, like, 70s and 80s. What was it called? Uh, e not, not seagulls, something seagulls. Flock of seagulls. That's it, flock of seagulls haircut. I thought it was the same guy. He's not, he's a different guy. But he is in junior with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, what was it Danny DeVito? Wow, we are. We're getting there. Let's see, Luke. Hello, everyone. I can uh, I can't think of who you all are talking about. <laughs> uh, sorry, Luke. How you doing tonight? Hope you're having a fantastic night so far. Um, we're talking about John uh, Panetta, um, comedian. I, I like I said, I've heard of him. Uh, I've heard of him many times. I've seen him like in passing with a couple of movies, but. Uh, Somebody who I need to check out uh, his comedy routine. And... Let's see. Get this one down. And then we're going to turn around and see what we got going on here. Uh, I'll, I'll see the movie Junior. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he is in the movie Junior. Like I said, with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. Uh, at least he's got a credit in there. Uh, what I just saw. So I'm... I'm don't remember who he was in there or what role he was credited for. I'd have to bring the phone back up and look. But, uh... Oh, hey, we're back at the top of the hour again. Let's see. All right, yeah, see, we're back down to 4,000 liters. Uh, oh, look at that. A million... 100,000 liters of wood chips and 937,000 liters. So we're going to be over 2 million liters of each product in this one facility alone. And then this is just going to be chugging away. This is going to keep producing 4,000 liter pallets. We're doing really good. Like this whole, uh, this whole field here has just been an absolute amazing, uh, amount of wood and wood chips just blowing my mind how much we're getting off of this man that's another movie i haven't seen in 
ages was Junior. Uh, that was the one where Arnold Schwarzenegger became pregnant. There we go. So we are just chugging along, getting all these trees out of here. Oops, uh, there we go. Maybe someone in the lab. Oh, you know what? You're right. He might be somebody in the lab. Oh, you know what? Now I... Curiosity is killing me. It's killing me. Nope. He was one of the clerks. He's one of the clerks, so... He's, he's just credited as Clerk in the movie. But he was Bumpo. Bumpo in Punisher. I did like that, uh, that Punisher with Thomas Jane. That was a really good one. There was actually a Punisher before that one, though, uh, with... Uh, Dolph Lundgren, way back, I think it was in the 80s, maybe? I'm trying to remember when that one came out. I think it was in the, in the early 80s when that one came out. Vortex says, I'm going to head off, but thanks for the amazing stream. Good night, everyone. Hey, I appreciate you coming out again, Vortex. Hope you have yourself a fantastic night. Uh, we are most likely going to hang out for a little while longer and then uh, going to be wrapping this up before too much longer because I do have work tomorrow. I uh, had work off today, but tomorrow got to go back and hit the grind. And uh, we'll kind of go from there and to see how, uh, how the mods drop. Uh, actually, funny story. So uh, earlier today... I decided, you know what, hey, I'm going to hop on and I'm going to do another live stream because, I, like I said, I had the day off and my daughter was sleeping, so I'm going to hop on do a live stream and have some fun. Kobe says, hi, hi, Kobe, how you doing tonight? Hope you're having a fantastic night so far. But anyways, I decided to come on and do a live stream this afternoon when my daughter was asleep. And it was about, I think, 1-ish. No, she actually went to bed late, so it was about 1.30, maybe closer to 2 o'clock when I finally started the stream. Well, when I had uh, kind of got rocking and rolling and I had already set up the stream and got uh, you know everything in place to, to send out notifications, all that stuff, it dawned on me. I'm like, oh no, I didn't check the mod hub to see if there was any kind of uh, activity on it today. So it just it completely it completely blew my... Uh, not, skip my mind it, it completely just went over me thinking like oh no i didn't check the mod hub there might be map tours i have to do there might be map updates and i'm just kind of sitting here getting ready to hop on a, on a live stream you know because th those are like the the kind of things that i have to work on right away as they come out are the updates and the map tours uh because there's so much competition in the space you know if i can put out my material sooner um then it helps you know get in front of more eyeballs and and all that stuff you know and oftentimes the views get eaten up by the big you know youtubers out there so one of those that if i can get material out there as fast as possible then it just helps the channel and and all that stuff well i'd already started going you know into the stream and then realized that i didn't check so i'm setting up a stream i'm getting everything all you know ready to go and all of a sudden i'm like uh oh and i go to check the mod hub and i'm like oh and a big sigh of relief i'm like okay there's no map tours there's no no mods released today um i was actually really shocked that nothing released today um actually i shouldn't say i'm shocked because here lately it's been like a real hit or miss on the mod hub and the days hmm okay I guess the tree got scared because I was coming around and just fell over, fainted with worry. <laughs> let's see, let's go ahead and pick up. We are really 
approaching the end of this. We're really getting to the end. Kobe says, uh, you have a lot of money. Yes, uh, Kobe, I, I'm actually really squirreling away a bunch of money and a couple of main sources of revenue on this particular map um, are the wood pellets here that I've been working on from all the wood and wood chips, converting them over. I haven't done any sales of those, but that's going to be a pretty penny um, once we do sell those off. We're talking like 250, 300,000 $400,000 like in one fell swoop. It's going to be a lot, a lot of money. And we haven't even converted everything yet because you can see we've got over 1 million liters of wood chips here that's all getting converted into pellets and actually at a higher rate than what we have. So we have 1 million, one, almost 1 million, 100,000 here. We're going from four to seven. So we're gaining three liters per cycle. Um, so yeah, it, it's we're going to be getting more than 1.1 million. We're going to be getting like quite a bit more um but the main money maker has been methane we're chugging along with methane uh at about i think it's fifteen hundred dollars per thousand liters uh we're getting tons and tons of methane this is the one production i have at the farm there and it has seventy one thousand liters uh of methane but we also have the main biogas plant Ooh, and that's out of material so 174,000 liters of methane here so that is just chugging along doing really really well and again $1,500 per thousand liters it that adds up and adds up really quickly um, so yeah that's been our big money makers here uh, Benji says catch you all later have a wonderful day Benji thank you again for stopping by hanging out with us had a fantastic time with you tonight Hope you have a great night, and we'll catch you again soon. Let's see. Dust Bunny says, good night, Mr. Charles. And, oh, corrects the spelling. And then Kobe says, oh, nice job. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. But, yeah, no, we're just, we are just chugging along, and we've got so much product just, you know, in the process of kind of doing and making. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're really working hard. We bought this whole entire forestry area here down in the southern uh, southwestern portion of the map um, let's go up here this whole forestry area we bought all of this and you can see this is all that's left these trees are directly in front of me everything's been cut down everything's been taken out so yeah we are we're doing real good real real good it's just been a lot of work a lot of you know driving and, and and you know getting everything that we need done done but we're getting there we're getting there slowly but surely but the great thing is too that we also figured out ways to kind of you know i don't want to say cheat the system but help expedite and make things a lot faster than what they normally are especially when it comes to uh woodworking here you know, we really help make things a lot go a lot faster. I'm really happy that we did it because uh, we were going the slow route at first. Here, let's go ahead and start picking up some of our mess here. Oh, ah, darn it! And boop, boop. Just picking up our mess. This reminds me of uh, when it's time to clean up with my daughter. We'll sit there and sing her songs uh, to help her clean up and clean up, clean up. Everybody everywhere, clean up, clean up. Everybody do your share. <laughs> the joys of having small children. You get all these songs just stuck in your head. Oh my goodness. So anybody out there with small children will know exactly who I'm talking about. Those without small children likely will not. But there's a, a YouTuber out there. Her name is Miss Rachel. She is an absolute... Uh, <laughs> she is a child whisperer is probably the best way that I can put it. And, uh, oh, uh, here, 
Kobe says, I subscribed and liked the video. Oh, Kobe, I'd greatly appreciate it. I greatly appreciate you subscribing to the channel and liking the video. But, uh, so yeah, so Miss Rachel, um, she does like a lot of songs, a lot of colors, speech, uh, uh, like teaching kids how to speak and, uh, learning sign language and the whole nine yards. Like, um, we've actually learned a lot of things from her personally, uh, by watching her content and how to, uh, better communicate with our daughter and how to interact with her, how to get her to learn and do all those kind of things. Well, <laughs> I, I ended up going on to Instagram the other day and I came across this thing. And it's like, uh, a parent's progression on Miss Rachel and you can hear Miss Rachel kind of singing and dancing in the background and it's panned in on a father and the kid and the kid's just sitting there kind of staring at the, at the television screen and the father, he's like, Ugh, you know, just that kind of eye roll and throws his hands into his, into his, uh, throws his, uh, face into his hands and just kind of starts rubbing his forehead. It's like, Oh God. And then all of a sudden it goes to, that's like month one. And then there's month two and he starts kind of humming along and doing a little bit of singing to, to the songs and all that stuff. And then there's month three and he's like, there's no Miss Rachel on in the, in the house at all, but he's sitting there like singing and dancing, like while cooking kind of thing. He's just like singing to himself kind of thing. And then month four, he's uh, like kind of really energetically singing to his kids. Like he is Miss Rachel at this point just sitting there just singing and dancing with the kids and all that stuff and then there's month five where he is in the car driving to work and he's just belting out miss rachel's song just just singing at the top of his lungs no kids around no like he's just <laughs> it's just it is one of the saddest but most true things i've ever seen because i myself went through that same exact progression of uh to humming to to just being more and more into it i haven't progressed to the full-throated you know singing and dancing and, and all that stuff that that is gonna stay reserved <laughs> but uh but no it's one of those where it's funny in how the things that your kids like that uh like just in general your kids likes and interests become your interests and it's amazing how that kind of works out it's really kind of wild, like things that you personally thought you would never find interesting whatsoever. All of a sudden you're sitting there doing it right along with them because you want to be there and doing things with them kind of thing. It's really kind of wild and it's really a lot of fun. Like, uh, you know, perfect example. Oh, Eli says, hi. Hi, Eli. Welcome back. But uh, one of the things that uh, <laughs> that my daughter's been doing here lately is that she's been playing with this little kitchenette set that we got for Christmas. And one of those things that, you know, on a normal day, I wouldn't even consider, you know, sitting there and playing with it. Just kind of go about and do my own thing, kind of, oops, kind of thing. Well, uh, <laughs> for some reason, I sat down one day and I'm starting to play with her and and she's handing me glasses and like, oh, and I'm sitting there pretending with her. And it was just, it was really funny just seeing like something that I would never do on a normal. Ooh, that's uh, that's a tree in the road. Hmm. Well, <laughs> hopefully the cars can get through. <laughs> That's the whole reason why I've been coming at it from this direction. I don't know why all of a sudden I stopped. It's probably because I got distracted. <laughs> With telling my uh, my kid's story. <laughs> oh, goodness. I know, it's just, it's wild. You know, it's just, like I said, your kid's interests become your interest. And uh, it's so funny. It's just really, really funny. Oops. There we go. Take a quick drink real fast. 
look at this. We are rapidly, rapidly approaching the end. What would you say? That's maybe about another half dozen trees or so. Man, we're so close. We're so close. All right, maybe more than a half dozen. There we go. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Come on. Oh, come on. Where? Where? There we go. Oh, so close, so close. Oh man, three left, three left. Oh yes. I can't wait to get these three down, get all these picked up, and then to see just nothing but a wide open field full of stumps. Last one, last one! There we go! Oh, we need like some kind of victory music, like Eye of the Tiger or something like that. It's like, Dun, dun, like some 80s just kind of like <laughs> oh my goodness yes come on let's do this let's go let's go like I said y'all today was a really really good night and I am just so pumped I'm so like I am really oh I'm feeling it I'm feeling it. it's almost midnight I don't care I don't care right now All right, let's get this one that's in the middle of the road. Oh. And, oh, is that it? Is that it? Is that it? It looks like it. Get out of here, box. <gasps> Ooh, look at it, look at it. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that. Oh, that's amazing. You know what I might do? Oh, um, hmm. Now I'm thinking. That's, that's dangerous. What I might do is I might take this grass field and extend it out this way to here. And then this be the main entrance for the grass field. And then have my main field, the big field, ride right up against it. Maybe just a little bit of a barrier between the two kind of thing. And then have this all be this main barley, wheats, you know, kind of field. Some, you know, sorghum. No, it's not going to be sorghum because that doesn't produce straw. Like I said, I'm going to take the, the bushes. I'm going to extend them down over to here. Get this all kind of built out have it kind of encase this property here for the most part i can't get uh, too far into the corner here which that kind of stinks because you're right at the map edge but i mean worst uh worst things have happened cade says what's up what's up cade how you doing tonight hope you're having a fantastic night so far we are just finishing up cutting down all the trees in this forestry area Every single one is now gone, and I am, oh, I am just ecstatic right now. I am on cloud, you know, normally the Saints cloud nine. I'm going to say cloud 9,000. It's over 9,000. <laughs> if anybody gets that reference, again, virtual high five. I'll, I'll reach through the screen and just boop, give you a nice little high five because, oh, love, love that, uh, that spoof that is absolutely hilarious again if you know what it, what i'm referencing there we can we can be friends and give you a good high five 
Uh, Cade says, just subscribe, man. You're funny. Hey, I appreciate it, Cade. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We are, uh, uh, like I said, we are we're doing really good. Doing, Having a really amazing night tonight. Um, like I mentioned earlier, tonight was my daughter's first and second time saying I love you. So really pumped up, really full of energy. Really, really got some good stuff going right now. Some good juices flowing. So now... Now, we got some grinding to do. We got some grinding. So it's now 1422. The product that's in that container is going to stay in that container until the top of the hour hits. In which case, that's going to transfer over 161,000 liters from here over to the various inputs. But that's really it. I mean, really... We don't have much more going on after this. And then this wood, uh, I should say, this pellet production facility is going to go dormant for a little while because we don't have any other wood and wood chips to kind of feed into it and doesn't have a lot of storage. That's the only bad thing about this particular production point is that there's no real good way to um, to feed it, to, to, to keep it sustained. But this one, you can see, has tons of space. Over 2 million liters are going to be stored up in this carpentry here. And it's going to be producing furniture. It's going to be producing pellets. It's going to be just chugging and chugging and chugging and chugging. So we are in really good shape. We've got tons of product that's getting made. And I'm really happy about that. So once this 161,000 liters is gone from this mobile wood warehouse, this is going to get sold off. It's going to get off the off the books, quote unquote, and is just no longer needed. It's not going to be there. And it's $500, so I'll get $250 back and I can buy it again if I get another forestry area. But like I said, we need to get to work on cleaning up all these uh, stumps. And I do have the devourer here. I'm going to return that actually now I'm thinking about it because I'm not going to get any product from these. And I've got the stump grinder that uh, works a little bit better than this one. Um, let's disconnect like that. Let's see. Luke says, congrats. Thank you, Luke. I greatly appreciate it. Like I said, um, so to kind of rehash, I, I've told the story a couple times. I'll go ahead and say it one more time because I'm, I'm one proud papa right now. Um, my daughter, she's getting ready to turn two. She's going to turn two on February 4th. And uh, we ended up uh, getting ready to put her down to bed. Typically around 9 o'clock is when her bedtime is. And as we are preparing to... Why is this all of a sudden going so slow? Oh, I guess that's just the working speed. Oh. Well... I guess we might as well just do that. Anyways, uh, as I'm getting ready to put her down and put her to bed, uh, get her ready, you know, and all that stuff, um, normally what I do is I'll sing to her. I'll, I'll say, sing songs like Twinkle Twinkle, Old MacDonald, just all, all those kind of, you know, typical kids' songs. Uh, Itsy Bitsy Spider, the whole nine yards. And here lately it's been Old MacDonald. One, because why not? It's kind of appropriate for the channel I run. <laughs> but at the same time it helps her kind of associate animals and all that stuff so I'll sit there and be like old McDonald had a farm and I'll say chickens and I'll ask her what sound does a chicken make and then she'll you know she'll say buck buck in her cute little you know two year old almost two year old voice you know buck 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 and then I'll finish singing the rest of the song kind of thing well today I decided you know what let's not do old McDonald let's not sing Let's ask her to, because this is the time that that's the time of night where she's kind of the most focused as to what we're telling her and what we're saying to her. So I'm like, all right, hey, uh, hey, Millie, can you say, you know, can you say I love you? And I, she started saying something and then she kind of trailed off. And then I was like, can you say I love you? And all of a sudden she said it and I let out this huge like kind of scream. And my my wife comes running into the into the bedroom with us and. She's like, what, 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 what's going on? Like, she's panicked, thinking that something was wrong. 
and I calmed her down. I was like, no, 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 nothing's wrong. And then I said, she said, I love you. for the, and, and she's like, oh, I missed the first I love you. And she just, you could tell she was crushed when that happened. So I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. We're going to get her to say again. So we sat there and worked for like 20 minutes trying to get her to, to do it. But my wife, on her rush into the room, she grabbed one of my daughter's pacifiers and she was holding her hand and my daughter saw the pacifier. So she was kind of distracted at that point. And so it was at that point we gave her the pacifier because she was starting to get a little fussy because she wanted it. Um, but, you know, mommy and daddy were like, no, please, please say the I love you some more kind of, kind of stuff. Oops. And uh, so we worked with her for like 20 minutes and finally we got her to say it. We finally got her to say the I love yous. And my wife and I, we let out the biggest, you know, scream of like, oh, you know, it was just such a cool moment kind of thing the first and second time that she said i love you and it was the same exact uh reaction i had the first time she had it the the, the second time she said it and <laughs> she uh you know as soon as we like shouted and and we were making a big o to do my daughter's like you know throwing up her hands like in victory and you know she's clapping and you know doing the like yay like she, she's like, she's happy that mommy and daddy are happy kind of thing so it was just it was just a really cool kind of thing and it really kind of pumped us both up we were really having a, a good good night after that and right afterwards after we put her down i came on stream and so i've been i've been pumped up and excited ever since so yeah it was just one of those come on you can you can get that little stomp it's okay it's okay hey 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 come on you can do it i know stump you aha It's like the little stump that could, I guess. See, these ones here where we cut it down with the devourer, these ones delete like super fast, super easy. But the ones where I hand cut them, I cut, I must have cut them so low that it doesn't recognize them and wants to give me headaches. Oh, this is so fantastic. I am so pumped that we got this whole field just pow, done. Love it. Let's see. Cade says, uh, that's what I'm talking about, man. Congratulations. Oh, thank you all. Thank you all so much. Like I said, it was just such a... Uh, like I say, it, it's, it's a big milestone. Like, it, it's just one of those things where, you know, she obviously doesn't... Well... I don't know if it's obviously she doesn't understand, but she doesn't, she's just repeating what we're saying kind of thing. I don't think she actually, like, she feels the love, she feels it, but when she's saying it, she's not associating it to the feeling kind of thing. But you know what? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. My daughter said I love you for the first time and second time tonight. So, yeah, it's been a really good night. And it sounds like we got, you know, uh, a blessing, Luke. Yes, 100% a blessing. Um... And again, um, it, it, it's one blessing after another after another with, with her because she's an IVF baby. My wife and I had to struggle, really, really struggle to have kids. A um, lot, of, lot of issues uh, in that regard. So she was a, a child in the making for over 10 years kind of thing. It was... Uh, you know, money and all that stuff that kind of restricted it. And then finally we were able to afford it. We got the right insurance at the right time with the right finances and all that stuff. So yeah, it was one of those, uh, we've, we've, we've been blessed many times over and I've told the IVF story a few times on this channel, um, which that in of itself was a huge blessing. Like we, we have been blessed many times over. We got very, very lucky, uh, in our IVF, uh, story kind of thing um, because we produced well under the normal amount of eggs that uh, would normally happen in an IVF situation there's some women out there who will produce uh, you know 10 15 20 eggs uh, going through IVF and still struggle to become pregnant and to have a pregnancy carry to term kind of stuff we got very lucky where we had four 
four eggs and two of them actually like developed kind of thing and my wife is now pregnant again with our second IVF baby um, you know and things are going fantastic right now going really good for us so yeah we, we are 100% blessed um, you know definitely 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 so very very lucky man very proud and happy papa tonight and you know came on to to do a bunch of work and sounds like uh sounds like we're rocking and rolling with the with the channel we're, we're you know making making new friends getting new subscribers uh yeah just very very happy very very much so thank you all so much i just want to one more time i know i said the uh the tier twos uh memberships earlier and gave all the thank yous but i want to go ahead and thank everyone one more time uh thank you all so much for for subscribing in the channel for you know coming on board and enjoying the content um you know i have an absolute blast coming on here hanging out with everyone talking with everyone having these kind of cool laid-back streams um you know for for the new members uh, new subscribers to the channel uh, I'll give a kind of a quick rundown of what we're doing right now and kind of what the channel is all about. So what we're doing here is we're on Maple Farm. We have a Let's Play series that's going on uh, right now. And this is the post episode 13 live stream. This is the sixth live stream we've done post episode 13. And what the live streams are, uh, are the kind of filler episodes in between, or not episodes, but they're like the filler uh, between the main episodes um, and a lot of my channel was uh, inspired by Mr. Sealy P. Um, he, he, I used to watch his content consistently like over the over the years kind of thing so it was one of those things that when I decided to make a channel it was really him that kind of drove me to be like you know what that's something I want to do um, well, one thing that he had as a very consistent issue was people coming to him and saying, well, you know, you're obviously, oh, I missed a stump right there. They're, they're sitting there telling him, oh, well, you're obviously cheating money into the system. You're not doing this legit, you know, kind of thing. So what the live streams are, one is a place for us to kind of gather around, have some fun, talk, and, you know, just kind of lay back and chill kind of thing that's that's the the main goal but what's also happening is the live streams are the kind of record of work you know the receipt of work so mr Sealy p to kind of combat the accusations of him cheating money into the game and cheating money into his let's play series just to kind of progress the story along he started doing screenshots of all the contract work that he would do kind of stuff um, me, this is my screenshots of work being done, you know, quote unquote, it's coming on doing live streams. And just like I said, the live streams are kind of a, just a chill kind of hangout kind of, kind of environment where we can sit back, talk about whatever. It doesn't even have to necessarily be about a uh, farming simulator. If we don't want to, it's one of those that there are, you know, very few subjects that are kind of off the table, um, just because that's not the kind of uh, things that I wanted to discuss on this channel the things like politics and religion those are the two things that are kind of the, the no-go even though again I have nothing against politics I have nothing against religion it's just not the kind of subject matter that ought to be discussed on a channel such as this so outside of those two things you know we kind of uh you know, talk about whatever comes up and whatever people are in the mood to chat about. You know, obviously keeping it within reason, you know, keeping it within, uh, you know, friendly, uh, 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 friendly topics and all that stuff. You know, no, uh, like lashing out at people or no, no, uh, you know, personal attacks, things like that. But other than that, you know, things are pretty much wide open. Like we were talking about earlier, how, uh, I was talking about uh, before making this channel, this gaming channel for Farming Simulator. I was talking about, uh, you know, actually starting up a uh, YouTube channel about cooking. I love to cook, 
kind of thing. So it's one of those, uh, I was thinking about that a long time ago, but then I felt that I would have to kind of put my face in front of the camera and kind of, you know, do, do that kind of thing. And, and right now I'm just not comfortable with being in front of the camera. I'm more than happy in being the voice behind the scenes, but not, uh, not the image kind of thing and that we might grow into that one day we might actually like take off into to showing our face and and you know especially if, if we get bigger and 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 whatnot and kind of grow the channel the way we have been we might do things like that but who knows you know time will tell kind of thing let's see let me take a look at the chat and see what everyone's saying at this point Let's see. So we've got uh, Dust Bunny saying, good night, sir. Uh, tell Mrs. D hello in the morning. Dust Bunny, thank you so much for coming out tonight. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic night. Uh, it was great seeing you again. Uh, again, I greatly appreciate the message that you sent me earlier. Um, and yeah, just have yourself a wonderful night. Hope you and your family have a great one. Take care. Let's see. So now we are just, like I said, we're just chugging along. We're doing our thing here. Huh. You know what's just dawned on me? Something just occurred to me. So I've had, what, two or three people here recently said that they subscribed to the channel, but... My notifications aren't popping up for some reason from uh, Streamlabs. That's weird. Should have gotten at least two or three notifications tonight saying that we have new subscribers. I got one earlier in the day, but uh, not here recently. Hmm. I have to look into that and figure out why that's, uh, that's not working because... I like that kind of pop up, popping up to kind of say, hey, you know, uh, so and so has subscribed to the channel, or so and so has done this, so and so has done that, and uh, I don't want, like, I want, I want it as a recognition of say, hey, this person's new to the channel, let's everyone welcome them and make them feel at home, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that's weird. I don't know why that. Uh, I have to look into into settings and figure out what's going on on, on that regard. Let's see. Uh, Cade says, I definitely subscribe, but let me check to make sure. Uh, yeah, no, definitely, because uh, like I said, it should have uh, should have had a pop up on the uh, on the stream here that said that you uh, were you know, a new subscriber. You know, and like I said, it's one of those I like that kind of notification. I mean, I don't know if if. Any, not everybody might like it or whatnot, but uh, especially because it's just the generic Streamlabs thing, um, I do want to eventually like make it something custom, you know, to the channel. But again, that all just takes time to, and, and oftentimes takes money. Um, but it's just one of those that, uh, like I said, it, it's one of those that when that flag comes up, I want to make a big deal about saying hey this person's new they just subscribed and i want to i want everybody to feel welcome here and be able to have fun um on these streams you know so like i said kate i know you joined there was uh uh kobe that joined earlier as well uh says yes and i am post no uh yes i am and post notes on yeah so that's so that's so weird i don't know why don't know why i'm gonna I'm going to do some research and figure out uh, maybe there's some kind of setting that I have that's uh, only X amount of notifications. Maybe it's, uh, huh, maybe I only get like so many notifications within a certain amount of time frame or something. I don't know. We will figure this out. It, it will happen because, like I said, Especially new subscribers. I definitely want like new subscribers when they uh, when they're new to the channel. I want to be able to kind of run them through like, hey, you know, you're here for the live streams, but you know, this channel offers far more than just live streams. You know, we do map tours and mapped updates. 
um, which from what I understand, there's not a whole lot of other YouTubers that do what I do in regards to the uh, map updates. So what the map da updates I'm referring to is, you know, people are pretty familiar with map tours, right? You know, YouTuber, you know, whatever goes out there and shows all the points of interest and all that stuff. We're used to seeing YouTubers like Mr. C the P, Farmer Klein, uh, Farmer Cop, all of them will do map tours to, to one degree or another and they all have their own little kind of way of doing things but what I do that a lot of other uh, uh, not streamers but other YouTubers and whatnot don't do is that I will give an in-depth view of all the change logs when they come out so that way we can kind of see all the various changes when we can see them kind of thing so in, in this case, like in Maple Farm, not too long ago, there was an update that did all sorts of stuff, like added collisions into the, the hedges, um, added a different kind of silo system over at the, at the farms, like all that stuff. And I go through and I show in detail all the various changes, all the uh, words from the change logs, so we can kind of have a really good understanding as to, one, whether or not we want to update our files because there's sometimes an update that comes through that like nah I'll skip that it's not something that I find valuable or important you know I also let uh, people know that hey this is new save game compatible or, or you have to have a new save game in order to have this update kind of thing you'll be careful kind of thing um, so yeah it's just like I said that's we got the tours we got the updates we got shorts um, I need to get better about shorts though. I need to get better about making sure that I produce them. I've got uh, actually several on the back burner that I need to, to edit out and, sh and post kind of thing from the past like two or three episodes that, uh, that we've done. I've got them kind of sitting, waiting in the wings. I just haven't uh, made their final edits. There we go. And we're just chugging along. We're getting all this stuff done. I am really, uh, like I said, I've said it many times. I'm going to keep saying I'm really happy right now. Really, really happy because this is a ton of work that we put in over the past several streams. Like I said, this is stream number six that we've been doing. And we were able to get this whole area cleared out in six streams. Like that's, that's a ton of work. You know, now that's many hours worth of work that we've gotten to do, and hey, we're doing it. We're getting there. Let's see. Luke says, uh, oh, wait, nope. Yes, Luke, have a wonderful night, and God bless. You as well, Luke. You take care. Hope you have yourself a fantastic night. Uh, we are going to be starting to draw this stream to a close here within the next little while. I'm, uh, like I said, I have to work in the morning, so one of those that I can't stay up too much later but we are gonna gonna power through a little bit longer kind of thing so I'd like to like to be able to get as many of these stumps cleared out as possible that would be nice if we can get that all done because then uh, once the stumps are cleared out we could then turn our sights into actually the next episode kind of thing we can actually start looking into doing episode 14 Oops. I tell you what, I am absolutely shocked the snow has not started sticking yet. I'm really shocked. That's something else, too, is the farm productions that we have. Um, I really want the snow to stick for a little while, so that way I can go through and actually... Um, collect it. I want to be able to collect the snow and make it into water. Because that farm production will will do that. We'll be able to take the snow, make it in the water, and then we can use the water for other things in the farm production. So, yeah, we we got uh, we got lots of different avenues. You figure, like I said, we're only in episode thirteen, like of the actual storyline uh, kind of stuff. We're only thirteen episodes in. We've already made over a million dollars at this at this point. We're at four hundred thousand dollars right now with probably 
hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of product all squirreled away and ready to be sold off, um, we've got probably another, I don't know, maybe 250,000 liters of methane um, that could be sold off at $1,500 per thousand liters. So, I mean, we could very easily, very quickly be over a million dollars right here and now. If I, if I wanted to, we could just sell off a whole bunch of stuff and we'd be over a million. Um, and it'd be the second time in this Let's Play being over a million dollars. Like, this will be the first Let's Play where I've actually done that, where we've had multiple sessions of being over a million dollars. You know, and then we've got all the cows and sheep and chickens and horses over at the main farm. They're producing stuff like nobody's business. Um, we've got tons of wool. I think we've got like 13, 14 pallets in storage. Not to mention what's been produced since being here and just chugging along uh, how, what's been produced in the background kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, we are just, we are sitting pretty right now. We really are. Come on. There it goes. Just one of those you just gotta keep kind of waving the grinder just back and forth, back and forth until you can get it to absorb. There it goes. Let's see, Cade says, how long have you been uh, at this farm? So right now, if I take a look, I should be able to see my kind of gameplay hours. Um, do, 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 do. Time played uh, down at the bottom right ish hand corner. One hundred and twenty five hours is what I've uh, got into this. We've been playing this session for almost three hours, which is about the, the length of the live stream. So, yeah, I mean, we've got uh, we've got a decent amount of hours, you know, already on this map. But you figure only being 120 hours in, we've already made, you know, a couple million dollars worth of worth of product. I think that, I think that's doing pretty good. Like this is certainly I think the most aggressive of money making I've ever had in a let's play series. Like normally it's a a very long and drawn out kind of process um but this one here like we really were able to ramp up and get stuff done really really fast and i think a lot of that had to do with the decision we made early on we had a bunch of uh bunch of fields uh at our disposal for grass and stuff and grass grass makes tons of money you can make it into silage and silage is such a, a huge payout that uh yeah, it, it's hard not to make money when you got grass fields. Let's see. There we go. Wow, this is just this is just impressive. Just seeing just how expansive this is, how wide open this is. It's just so cool. Just really, really love it. Oops, I'm missing chunks. See, I can I can I think we're likely gonna have to wrap up the stream before I get to the end of all these stumps. I don't foresee this being something we can finish off tonight. Because there's just a ton of stumps. Because, yeah, it's almost 12.30 uh, my time. Like I said, I've got to be up in the morning to go to work. And it is going to be a busy, busy work week. Actually, my boss is... Uh, he's actually went out of the country. So, one of those that uh, we get to... 
not necessarily play hooky because unfortunately what's going to end up happening is everybody's going to come to me and whatnot instead of uh, going through him. So <laughs> that's going to be it's going to be an interesting week. I have I just have a feeling that uh, I'm going to get a lot of people who's like, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? It's like, no, that's not really my job, <laughs> but I'll help where I can. Because that's that's the kind of person I am. Is is hey, you know, we need X thing. Are you able to do X thing? And it's like, well, that's not really in my wheelhouse, but I can certainly try. And oftentimes, to I, I shouldn't say to my detriment, because I'll, I'll get the job done and I'll get it done right. That's just the mentality that I have. Um, but what often ends up happening is it slows me down in other areas that are supposed to be within my wheelhouse. So. I'm having to put in late hours and, you know, to make sure that I'm keeping up with, with my job, keeping up with things that need to be done, which, I mean, in the end, it makes me look good. And, you know, I certainly have a lot of people I work with that, you know, exclusively reach out to me when they need things because they know I'm reliable, know that I can get the job done. We'll sit there and be like, "Oh, you need data? Go to Dave. You need you need uh, you need a report? Go to Dave. He'll get it for you." I tell you what, that's always a good reputation to have, having especially at work, having people be able to rely on you as the person to do things for them. That's a good reputation to have. Now, yeah, it oftentimes means that you're going to have to do more work and and whatnot, but you will be recognized you will you will become somebody who is of value in whatever industry that you're doing one thing i've been hearing a lot here lately is this kind of mentality of well i'm just going to show up and just kind of be here kind of thing um there was a, it was this big fad for a little while um and it had a name and, and kind of thing it was like zombie mode or something along those lines where just people were just showing up to work and they were doing the absolute bare minimum just not to get fired kind of thing and it was one of those like i just didn't understand that kind of mentality that kind of you know i'm just here for the paycheck kind of thing well if you're here for the paycheck well then why are you not trying to you know do something to get into something where you're going to be happy kind of thing like i don't know just i uh, don't get me wrong i've had jobs where i've been absolutely miserable going into them Kind of things like oh you know i don't want to be here i want to just be home or this that and the other thing but if i don't go then i don't have any money and i don't have a way to do things like i get it it sucks working sucks sometimes unless you're doing like what i'm doing here and where i i'm having a ball i have an absolute ball you know but that's the thing is you got to find the things that you know you enjoy and that you want to do and you know figure out how it is you can go ahead and achieve those things You know, figure out the next step. You don't have to figure out how to get to the very end kind of thing. You know, what's the next step to get you on that path, on that right path to that next step? You know, and then figure out what the next step is beyond that. And then the next, and then the next. And before you know it, you know, X amount of time passes and all of a sudden you are in doing the thing that you're doing. You know, case in point, this whole channel... If, if you were to go back right here, right now, and take a look at my original content, my original content, like quality-wise, was absolute trash compared to what it is now. And, and what I mean by that is, originally, I was streaming to Twitch because that's what I could do. I could stream from my Xbox, go to Twitch, and then I would download the content from Twitch to post to YouTube after doing all the editing and all the things I needed to do in order to get it into the style that I wanted. But that created a lot of uh, audio issues. 
I was using just the normal headset that was, uh, you know, for the Xbox. So the audio was already trash because it's not meant for high quality communication. It's meant for, you know, people playing a video game together kind of thing. It's just meant to, to get the job done kind of thing. Um, but then we grew, you know, we were able to, you know, eventually buy a laptop that would work with a Elgato uh, stream capture device. Uh, we then got access to a uh, Elgato. Thank you, uh, by the way, to the Forge TCG. Thank you very much for continuing to let us uh, use it and continuing to let us, uh, well, one, giving it to, uh, letting us borrow it in the first place, but continuing to let us use it and whatnot. Uh, greatly appreciate you, brother. I really do. And uh, from there, we got the, you know, got the laptop. Then we got a brand new microphone. Uh, yeah, and just, just slow and steady those 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 things that you know you had the goal i had the goal in mind of hey i i like doing youtube i like making the content you know it's something that you know start out really really small and here we are now we're a channel that has over a thousand sub subscribers um we you know are continuing to grow each and every day with new and new people and yeah this is just it's fantastic i absolutely love being able to come on here onto these streams get to meet new people constantly come out and you know create content that i find is entertaining that other people are finding entertaining and just having having fun having fun doing it you know but it's one of those things you know just slow and steady slow and steady figure out the next step and then execute it figure out what you need to do and then go from there oh we're getting ready to hit the 1500 uh, hour mark which means that we will get all the wood from that container there into the productions and we'll finally be able to see where we kind of stand with everything when everything's all said and done oh there we go that's all taken up but no there's any any young people out there, don't be afraid to work. Don't be afraid to, you know, do something that you don't necessarily want to do. But make sure that you do it well. Make sure you do it really good. Like, don't don't go in and, and do everything all halfway and, you know, whatnot. And just get through the day and earn the check. Go above and beyond because then you're going to get the reputation of this is a person that I want to be able to rely on. And once that people can rely on you and they know that you're going to be there for them and that you're going to back them up and, you know, go above and beyond the, the, the call kind of thing, then things start working out from there. You start getting recognized. You start getting promotions. You start, you know, you start getting on the ladder of success. And that's what people don't understand is they think, oh, well, you know, I need to start at the top of the ladder rather than at the bottom and work your way up kind of thing there is very little opportunity to start at the top of a ladder you know at any business it is almost impossible and it's almost for those who do start at the top it's often a who you know and and kind of situation and if you know the right people you have the right contacts then you might be able to start out a little bit higher on the ladder but for everybody else you know, it's a, you know, I worked, you know, nine to five every single day and, you know, every single weekend to be able to get to the position that I'm in and, and so on and so forth. You know, I mean, heck, I'll, I'll use myself as a personal example. Um, the company I worked for, I worked for them since 2006. Now, we've been bought out many different times by other companies and whatnot, but over the years, um, you know, back in 2010 is where I really started learning what it was uh, that my job entails now, which is coding. I do a lot of SQL coding and things like that um, as my means of living. So I, I make reports, I do data extracts, ad hoc reports, things like that. And 
I didn't learn that until 2010, and I learned it all by myself. You know, I had some uh, had some really good people to kind of guide me, but it was through my efforts that I learned that I wasn't formally educated. I don't have a, a degree in what it is I do. But then I started, you know, doing it every single day, learning everything that I know now, and continue to learn to this day. And what kind of led me on the path of success is, you know, anytime somebody said, hey, do you know how to do this? My answer was not no, or that's not my job or whatever. It's, you know, I don't necessarily know the answer, but let me find it for you. Let me figure that out. Anyways, I'll get off of this uh, off of this particular horse, but oh, that was something I heard uh, not too long ago. Something I've been seeing, you know, going around and. Just something like I said. That, that's kind of the stuff we talk about here on the channel. Every every once in a while, we'll start kind of going into to either more serious subjects or, or things like that. And this is, like I said, this is kind of one of them. Um, and we can kind of go on to pretty much anything. That's the that's a great thing. Is uh, like I said, with very very few exceptions, will I uh, kind of pump the brakes on on a particular topic? Like I said, religion and uh, and politics. Those are the two big ones where. It's kind of the third rail. We're not going to touch them uh, on this channel just because there's too many, um, too many people out there on one side or the other. The moment that you say that you have a side or that you you take a position on something, that it's all of a sudden like you're on the the wrong team or you're on whatever, whatever. And I'm not interested in, in you know dividing. I'm interested in bringing people together to have fun. That's what I want. I think there's a lot of division going on in the world today and there needs to be more mechanisms like this where we can kind of bring people in, fold people into a sense of community and have fun. Let's see. So yeah, it is 12.36 and we are... Whew. We've got a lot of stumps. Let's see. Oh yeah, no. No, no, no. This that's a lot of stumpage. A lot of stumpage. Oof. Just oof. Yeah, see, we're still going all the way out to here and looks like we got most of it beyond this point, but yeah, we're going to have a lot more work to do. A lot more work to do. And that's okay. That's okay. Like I was saying before, never, never afraid of doing work. Nothing wrong with figuring out a good shortcut or two. <laughs> but uh, that's all good. That's all good. But I think this will be a good place to leave it. We have gotten this entire field. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let me bring this back up. So, there we go. All the wood, with the exception of about 3,000 liters, has been distributed. That means 1,075,000. Wow! Liters of wood. And 1,099,000 uh, liters of wood chips. Like, that's insane. We have this facility almost half full. Maybe even a little bit more than half. Because uh, it looks like maybe 2 million liters is the, the limit for this facility in all the products. So, yeah, we are wow. Just wow, 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 wow. And we're going to make tons and tons of product going forward. And then this is chugging along. What is this at right now? Look at that. That that bag is, I'd say, about three-quarters full. Yeah, about three-quarters full. 147,000, almost 148,000 liters in this bag. So, wow. And again, $2,300 for the low end for the pellets, $2,900 for the high end. So, we're going to make a 
pretty penny off of this. If we get this up to 200,000 liters and it's like 2,500 bucks, you're talking over half a million dollars just in one product. And we've got over 30,000 here. So we're almost up to the 200,000 mark of pellets. So we got uh, 35,000 liters here, 148,000 here. We are rapidly approaching 200,000 liters. Easily going to hit that uh, and then some. So yeah, that is awesome. Very, very, very happy. Let's once again take a nice look at this. Ugh, love it, love it, love it, love it. We cleared all this out. We're going to do a lot of landscaping. We've got lanes now that we can have in and out here. We don't have to go all the way out to here and then dive into this little driveway. We can just dive in right here across the uh, main driveway here and across this main driveway right here. We'll have to do some landscaping to kind of get little trails in here that'll be nice we're gonna get uh some bushes and we're gonna run these bushes all along this pathway here out to about here and then kind of encase the uh facility here with hedging maybe or or maybe even like a stone path a stone path might be cool too like the stone fencing that'd be kind of cool i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes but uh we have been producing like mad and i'm just i'm all on board but i want to thank everybody who came out tonight who showed up had a good time with y'all tonight uh you know what no let's scratch that i had an amazing time with everyone tonight and i hope you did too if you did please show me by liking sharing subscribing following commenting doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing that shows you're engaged with this channel and enjoying the content and that being said i hope everybody has a fantastic day evening night wherever you are blah, 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 blah. try that again wherever you are in the world take care mm -hmm.